Hi, fam. You are here with a uh, soon to be a classic matchup, Meg and Devin Bush. Yeah. A brush adept on Instagram. Um, Devin, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. This is really, I'm a little nervous. I'll be are honest you? with yeah. you. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I'm always nervous. What? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're, you're the professional. I know, right? You'd think. Um, we met at LVO last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Last year, and it happened to be <clears throat> that more than half the class happened to be from the Bay Area in yeah, general, and none of us, us knew each other before that. I know. It was so cool, and, like, I love that class. We took, um, it was a... Ambience. Ambience, yeah. and we, it was my first time working on a plinth project. Oh, no kidding. Right? We were we were with Will Hahn. Yeah, mm. I had never done it before. Really? It was so funny, Devin. Well, you did a really good job at I that, though, so. appreciate <laughs> that, because I was in there, and I was like... Wow, I'm out of my league. <laughs> hey, I and felt you guys the same were way. all you guys were all so sweet. Like everybody in that class was so good it was to each fantastic, other. Yeah. I felt very welcome in the, yeah. the Well that's what this hobby is all about, is just you know, sharing that community yeah. and just making sure that, you know, I I, I got you. <laughs> yeah. Um cool. Well Devin is gonna chat with us uh today about um weathering. Making Devin... stuff dirty, really. Oh whoops, I pushed the wrong one. Can you believe that? That's me. Oh, you have a spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> a little bit of a spoiler yeah. alert. Oh, I don't have the button. Oh, Meg. You said I was professional, and then look what happened. Here we go. We're inspired by you, There Devin. it is. <laughs> like, you inspire yourself and me and everyone out there. I inspire myself, too. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about some of Devin's work um, and uh, his weathering. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um... I really like weathering because I like telling stories. Yeah. And to me, those little, like, that little grime or that little paint scuff or paint scratch or something like that, it, it just tells whatever story you're wanting, whether it's a battle-hardened veteran, a vehicle that's been through it, or just that really subtle little bits of, like, salt spray even. Yeah. Of just, oh, it's been by the sea and yeah. stuff like that. That type of stuff, to me, it, it's the most rewarding for me to do. Because when you have that one out of ten people that go, oh, I really like this little thing that you did, it, to me that's just like wonderfully gratifying. Because yeah. like no one has ever seen that and you're the first person to see it. And I just I just love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, plus, it, to me, it's the Bob Ross kind of thing. And that mm -hmm. you get to make, th get a little bit messy, get a little bit dirty and stuff like that. And I originally did all of this stuff thinking... Oh, I gotta be perfect. I gotta be technical and stuff. I was like, no, 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 no. There's so many easy ways to just kind of get something going, and to correct things along the way. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, everything from like you, know, you can see the the right. Uh, the oh my gosh, the stealth suits, the stealth suits on the screen. Like those are for my personal like gaming army and stuff like that. Uh, to you know more display type things, and so. I try to keep this really approachable in that, like, hey, if you just want to make something a little dirty in your army, I love it. If you want to take it to the next level, you can apply yeah. any of these techniques and just make it that much cooler, that much better. If you want to submit it into a contest or something like that, it's really, really cool. And so, like, here with the Jump Captain, uh, it's to kind of showcase that he's not super grimy. Yeah. He's just been in it, and it's probably he's more seen of a... Some stuff he's seen some stuff yeah <laughs> he, he's he's fresh in the battle right yeah. like so with the the shadow warriors in the last one they've been through it for a long period of time you know so you got lots of streaking and rusting and they mm -hmm. looks really really gross this one looks like okay he's just been in a battle for way too yeah. freaking he's long just, his armor is a little used right it, well loved well yeah. loved that's what we like to, that's what i like to say anyway <laughs> um but yeah you can you can kind of see in in all of this is that you can make it as minute as you want or you can make it as just garish as you want there's mm -hmm. a lot of different things that you can do with this and i i like it because it tells a story it's a yeah. lot of fun this is awesome because we have a lot of people in our community that are army painters and mm -hmm. are kind of like i don't know if i want to tackle this sort of thing because i have to apply it to like yeah. all of my models and that's a lot of work and I'm not here to win a golden demon. I'm sure. here to play a game, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's really cool that you come from this kind of background and you understand yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I kind like of... These are going to be techniques that anybody could do oh, in oh, 100%, a relatively 100%. quick amount of time. And yeah. the, really Take the main thing is, is I kind of fell into doing more professional painting, if you will, right? Sure. Um, it's just, it just so happened to be that, like, oh, I won an award. Hey, maybe I am pretty good at this. <laughs> and it just kind of snowballed from there, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And I just found that I really, really liked it because I'm, I'm a competitive person. I really like to just kind of push myself. Um, and it's just, 
I don't know. I just kind of fell in love with it. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Yeah. So this is a, an Imperial Knight commission that I did. So this is another example. Oh, yeah. That's great. Where you have Wondering. side by side, right? Where in the metals and the metallics and stuff like that, one, you got cool little colors and you've got a bunch of different just marks and scratches, not necessarily a bunch of streaking and rusting. Yeah. And then on the actual Reaper sword, right? That's been, that's the thing that's seen all the damage, right? Mm -hmm. That's got all of the grossness on it and stuff. Yeah. So you can really implement a lot of different things. And this, this knight in particular, it's not heavily weathered. I did this for a commission for a client where he wanted it to be extremely tasteful. So there's mm -hmm. very small amounts. And we can kind of go over that cool. a little bit. And you, you, it's really up to taste, right? Awesome. You've seen on those cooking shows, yeah. like add salt to taste. Add this to taste. To taste. To taste. Yeah. Exactly. That means we're going to be licking our models later. Pro well, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, show some love for Devin. If you guys are happy to have him here and, and you're getting something out of today's hobby hang yeah it's kind of a workshop too which is yeah, super cool I, I'm, I'm very lucky i get a one-on-one -on -one lesson yeah um give I'd us love a feedback like too. yeah give us a like or give us a subscribe if you're not subscribed tell your friends family and enemies send tell us a super chat uh gift and membership but Devin, why don't we jump into yeah, absolutely. what we're learning today yeah yeah so i'm just kind of prepping right now uh, a little piece of foam right Thank i've you got for the hearts I've got a bunch of different little pieces of foam that I've just been kind of tearing. Okay. This is my own... Should I be doing that too? If you want. What I like to do is just look and make sure that... Let me put it in camera. Um, see that you don't have any really sharp manufactured edges okay. in certain spots. And so I just kind of like tear little pieces here and there just to see what I like. And I typically like to keep some of these extra bits because that might have a cooler shape than what I'm, you know, what I'm currently working with and stuff. Um, a lot of people have seen this sponge method okay. and it's, yeah, I'm interested in it. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's, it's a really fun way to put some immediate effects without a lot of time invested. And that's really like, I mean, I, my golden demon projects that I've done, like use this method. Right. And that it's all about, you know, exercising even further and further and further, right? Because we're going to Golden Demon. Right. Um, but you can you can stop anytime you want. So I like to just tear up little pieces and just kind of get a little bit more of an organic shape. And then uh, I prepped some some brown for you. So just, just kind of add a little bit of brown into your sponge. Okay. And then either on your gloves, your hands, like me, I'm a monster. I like to just dab a lot of it off. Okay. And a lot of that is just like a dry brush. Right? Yeah, yeah you're, yeah. you're just wanting to unload a little bit, right? I like doing it on my skin because this is a fun conversation spot to starter in the wild. <laughs> what <laughs> is that? True. Oh, I'm painting. I mean, I'm wearing gloves, but like I don't use the gloves to protect my skin. I use the gloves uh -huh. to protect my model because I get like sweaty palms. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to pick stuff off I'm my model. Nervous. But today's weathering, so maybe I should just take them off. I say go for it. I'll just I take them off. I say go for yeah. it. Plus, you put it on a little, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. The the most professional way to hold me. a model is with tack and a, a cork or a exactly. paint bottle. Yeah. So I unload it, and you can kind of see. It's uh, slightly dark and damp with with yeah. stuff. What you should, what we're kind of looking for, or I'll put it on another finger, is when you press down, oh, okay. you're looking for a very very light um, application of paint. Yeah, yeah, exactly, okay, so exactly. Whatever that is. <laughs> so this is the this is okay. the front of the model right here. Right, that's the little Tau drone head, right? That I printed mm -hmm. out and stuff. So we want to kind of keep that into uh, in the back of our minds, right? This is the direction that he'll be traveling, oh, so right? So stuff's gonna fly. Exactly, yeah. exactly, because okay. the drones are gonna be zipping around and yeah. stuff is gonna be flying and ping, 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 ping like that, right? So I typically like to work my way forward and go backwards. Okay. There are no real strict rules with weathering, but one of the biggest like quote unquote rules that obviously can be broken is the front. Or whatever's closest to the damage is going to get the, the most, the most thing, sense. right? Because that's the target. Yeah. Right? Now, the back right in here, that doesn't mean you can't weather it. Yeah, we can have a little booty weathering. Exactly. Exactly. He's got a little little badonk dunk in the trunk. So, essentially what I'm going to do is just, I'll reload this a little bit more. What I'll do. Thank you for the party lights, guys. We'll yeah. get to your questions. Um, what I'll do is I'll just very lightly tap. Right. Okay. You. It's very hard to see, at first, and I like that. Yeah. I like to do that. 
don't forget to change your hand around or even twist this in your hand mm -hmm. and move it because you're going to get different effects. Right. You're going to get different uh, styles. And then if you go, oh, that's not heavy enough for my liking, hit it again in the same spot mm -hmm. and then it builds up even stronger. Yeah. Right. Another little rule, if you will, is you want to hit these edges, right? The edges and those those hard lines tend to attract the most, you know, scuffing and damage mm -hmm. and weathering and stuff like that. So you definitely want to make sure you're Hit hitting the those. Okay. Um, don't forget to just have a little bit of fun with it. And if you're not liking how small those chips are, add a little bit more paint. Sure. Hit that spot again. The paint on my arm is still wet, so I'll use that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You went real heavy with that then. I guess I did, yeah. Um, Molecule, thank you for your super chat. I struggle with... <clears throat> I think he means battle damage against darker backgrounds. I don't know. I like battle damage. <laughs> yeah. A light base color, it seems easier for me to figure out the scratch layers, but dark kills yeah. me. Yeah. No, that that's a that's a that's a very that's a very good point. Um that's why I brought this, right? Cuz it's like light and then you put dark on it. Um I like using a light gray for a chipping color. Um as if a it's, if it's against a dark Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um I have a ton of different products. Like I use these weathering color pencils. Um, I use like the AK streaking grime, all these different types of product products. Um, so I, I really like using kind of a mid to light tone gray for my chipping. Um, that can really be anything that you're wanting it to be because think about it. We're in the mini world. Mm -hmm. What do we do when we first get our minis? We prime them, right? At, well, at, well, we build them and then we prime them. Right. After we prime them, um, it's going to have a, basically a foundation color, whether that's black or gray or brown or whatever it is. We do that in real life, too, because we want to protect a lot of our uh, we want to protect our assets, if you will, like a tank. You don't want that thing rusting out, you know, really, really quickly. So we're going to absolutely prime it to protect it. Yeah. So imagine whatever primer color it were, you know, it is for you. Right. So if you're mm. doing like a dark brown, you wouldn't want to use a dark brown for right. weathering. It's right? the color underneath. That, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And okay. a lot of this is we're we're kind of going for believability, not exactly realism. So we're just trying to give the impression of things. Yeah. Right? Let me put a couple more right there. All right. So you can kind of see. Let me pull this back a little bit. You can kind of see. He's just got little bits and pieces here and there, right? Nothing too crazy. Okay, yeah. I feel Let's like I yours. should stop because sometimes I get carried away. Put a few put a few light dots towards the back. Towards the back. And okay. then I think that looks really, really good. Okay, great. <laughs> this is the next part is totally up to you, right? I'll then grab a brush. And if I want to make something a little bit bigger, right? There's this little spot right in here. There's a lot of little tiny crap, uh, little tiny like pits and... Mm -hmm chips and weathering and stuff like that, I want to break this up a little bit. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll go back into my paint that we were just using, the exact same paint, and I'll take a nice sharp brush. And what I'll do, let's put this right in camera. I'll take some of these big dots, like I'm going to go right in here, and I'll just make them a little bit bigger. Okay. Right? And then maybe I'll draw a little bit of a line just to add a little bit of extra spice and a little bit of extra variety and stuff. And I'll, you're just taking the paint directly out yeah, of your... Yeah, just direct, directly out of here. I didn't prep it in a wet palette. Um, so I, I usually will scoop some up, put it in a wet palette because we're working it's with these little... nicer to work with, yeah. Yeah, we're working these these little dry palette kind of cups and stuff. Yeah. Um, it, that tends to work the best that i found for okay. these, uh, these foam and stuff. And yeah, I'll just come in and I'll add little bits and pieces here. I'll just kind of break up a little bit of monotony. Um... While, okay. while you're doing this, I'll make this mistake on camera. So I'm adding these little tiny bits, and then I go, oh, no. I just added too big of a thing. Oh, Wipe no. it off with your thumb. Rinse off your brush. And keep a little bit of moisture in it, and you're just going to kind of... It's weathering. It's okay. Exactly, yeah, right? that's kind of freeing. Right, actually. and then you're just going to kind of move it around. I trend, tend to move it towards, like, those kind of shadowed areas because mm -hmm. that's... Those mistakes or happy accidents tend to be a little bit less apparent there and stuff. Yeah. Right? And so, uh, looking pretty good, right? Despite the, the you know, little, little bit of a blunder there. 
no big deal because we're going to then continue to add and reinforce things to it, right? Right. So this is certainly to whatever your taste is. If you really want this thing to be beat up, beat the heck up, then you're going to add a lot more. You're going to add a lot of dings and scratches and, you know, big chunks of it where the paint has really, really peeled and stuff. Soups, thank you for the Hobby Collab membership. Um, Ooh, yeah, thank welcome you. Welcome, Cavino. You're a lucky man. I'm a lucky man? Well, Cavino is. I guess you oh. are, too, because you're here. Well, I'm lucky because Cavino's here. <laughs> yeah. Happy to have you. Hope you guys are enjoying the stream. Yeah, so I'm looking at this, and I'm like, I'm liking it, right? I'm looking around all over the place. Uh, maybe I want, might want to add a little bit more to, to that badonka donk, you know? Sure. Just because I don't want one spot to be overly clean and one spot to be, like, overly dirty. And then it's a lot of just really whatever you're wanting. Yeah. There are some real hard and fast rules, but honestly, if you're doing this for a gaming piece, you know, you got that, you know, that one tank or that one night or those. Have fun. Have fun with it. Yeah. Don't, don't really worry too much about having it super realistic. Um, but one of those rules that helps with a little bit of that realism is these edges, right? Especially on the inside of these grooves right here. I'll pull yeah. the brush. And the inside of these grooves, they tend to collect chipping and rust. Same thing with along okay. this hard edge right there. So you can very easily do a quick line highlight like that, right, to add a little bit of extra weathering there. Okay. Or you can kind of tip tap with your brush to just add little bits and pieces of that weathering damage there, right? And it's really, really soft. It's really, really subtle. But I promise you, when you do these types of things, it helps. It kind of like, it kind of fools your mind a little bit. It does, yeah. Right? And that, oh, that's that's how it would work. And maybe you might not be realizing that in, in real life that, that it is how, in fact, it works. But your brain is constantly seeing those types yeah. of things all the time. And so we, we kind of want to fool that, fool, fool your brain a little bit, right. you know? Um, that being said, you're painting this for a gaming piece and stuff. Have fun with it. You, yeah. know, you don't need to go overly crazy. So I'm going to kind of call this pretty good on the model's right side. He's got kind of a big, heavy damage, damage area right here. He's got maybe a little bit of scuffing right over here. And then the rest of it is just little pebbles and stuff. This guy's been through it, right? Yeah. As you can kind of tell, I like things really dirty. Don't we all? Hell yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, an application that you can do. Really, it's just however you want, right? So with my ghost kill here... Look at this guy. With my ghost kill here, I did less of the chipping, and I did a little bit more of the actual streaking and grime because he's a stealthy boy. He's not getting into the thick right. of it, right? That's true. Yeah. The, uh, right, it's this is good, like, lore. Like, yeah. Like, I like how you can use this to tell the story of the lore. Right, exactly. Like, there's all these pretty boy, like, wizards who are like, I'm back here while you guys go and exactly. take care of stuff. He's, he's seen <laughs> some... Thinking AOS, but... Yeah, yeah he's yeah. seen some stuff, but he's, you know, he's, he's a quiet boy. Yeah. Whereas the broadside, he's got a little bit more damaging, especially towards the chest and everything like that, because... Yeah. That's probably one of the bigger targets that the enemy's trying to hit. Mm -hmm. Like this, you got this giant cannon on it. Up. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So let's see what you got. All right, here's mine so far. Yeah, I love it. We're Are you happy with it? Yeah, I think so. It's so funny. I'm not. I, I'm this person that doesn't like playing like mecha stuff or robots sure, or sure. like machinery. That's my love. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there, people like fall into a few camps, right? And that's one of them. And yeah. I'm like. Where are my animals, right? So yeah. I don't deal yeah, yeah. with weathering. Although I guess you could put like muddy paws or something. And you I see, just, I stay away from yep. it. So yep. Weathering like, kind of encompasses a yeah. lot of different things. This is a really easy thing to showcase. Yeah. Right? But just because you've got an animal on a, for, a, for a project stuff, it doesn't mean you can't still weather, weather it, it with yeah. pigment powders and show like, mm -hmm. oh, it's been in the environment. Maybe he's got a little bit of mud under his, like his underbelly if yeah. it's like a wolf or something like that. All of that is kind of encompassed, right? Yeah. All the stuff on the base here, right? That's all weathering too, using very specific like, you know, weathering powders, using different techniques and stuff. And it just kind of encompasses a whole lot more than just, you know, robot destroy kind yeah. of a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
All right, so we're okay. we're at a really good good point. We're both mm-hmm. happy with uh, where with so. w- what we have. We have a few different options. Um, you can kind of see in the background here. I've got a ton of different styles of paints, and it's really to show you that it doesn't really matter what the paint is if it works for you. Fantastic. Yeah. Use that. We do want to kind of lean into the browns, into these little like sure. into these oranges and stuff like that. Um, just because that's how rust or that oxidation um, behaves. Mm-hmm. But play with it, right? Okay. Not everything has to have all those oranges and those yellows and stuff, right? Um, so one of the things that I really like to do is especially in these bigger highlight areas, right? So we're going to be focusing on some of these chunkier sides right in, right in I can here. Turn this off if you want. Yeah, right right in here where there's those big damages and stuff. And we're going to highlight them. Oh, okay. Right? This, let's put, Interesting. let's put your brave pants on. Yeah. All right. So again, we're going to take a nice sharp brush and we're going to highlight in the direction that the light is pointing. And the very easy way for, especially for this guy is here's forward. So highlight along the back, right? I'll show you real quick. Okay. So I see this little, uh, this little, this little cluster right here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to load up my brush with a highlight color. It's one of the colors that I've actually used in here. And I'm just going to very lightly apply a small highlight. The idea behind that is one, it looks cooler. Two, it kind of illustrates the paint peeling. Yeah. Right? So then I'll take, let's angle this a little bit. I'll take it oh, right okay. along the edge here. It. Oh, that looks great. Right? So we'll start adding that paint peeling here. Yeah. This is also very much a, however you're wanting to do it, if you're wanting to do it on one side or another, you also don't have to worry about covering up too much of that rust. Right. Right? You have, ah, oh, there's too much brown here. Well, just go in with your highlight color and cover some of that up. Can I steal some of your highlight color? That yeah, you're absolutely. Using? Oh, we're using, I got them right here. Oh, it's this. Okay, great. Use, I can do it. <laughs> uh, Typhon Ash. Typhon That's Ash. That's the first one that I'm using. Got it. And that's all. That's really specific to this color scheme that I have. So sure. ideally, you would want to use your like final highlight color. Okay. Um, of whatever it might be, whether it's like, oh, it's you know, McCrag blue is my final highlight color or something like that. Then that's what you would want to try to use, to start your your little highlights and stuff. Okay. While doing it, you're not really gonna notice a whole lot. Sure. Because we're we're adding tiny, tiny, tiny little things here and there, and you don't have to highlight everything. Okay. Keep that in mind. Um, Saray's in chat. I don't know if you've met Saray. Yeah, I did. Okay, that's right. The last time you were here. Yeah. Um, he said, What's up, Saray? Good to see you, Devin. Your work is incredible. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yours is too. That, uh, were you, was he the one that did that Imperial Fist tank? Is that the Salamanders? Or, or maybe it was the Salamanders. Yeah, he Salamanders. did the Salamanders. Scheme. Salamanders are yeah. green. Yeah, I really, really liked it. I mean, I, I love painting Imperial Fists. They're my, they're my absolute favorite color to paint because I'm a bit of a masochist in painting yellow. He made it look so easy. It look, it came out so nice. Yeah, Yeah, but there's a lot of trials and tribulations that uh, go with yellow especially. Yeah. Common pain point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much so. So this is just real... It's super subtle, but it has actually, I mean, yeah. like when you're looking up close, like, oh, this has an actual like big impact. Yeah. And it's in showing each individual thing on, especially on camera as we're doing this, it's a, it's a little bit difficult, but when we start putting this all in and putting it all together and stuff, you really start to notice it coming together with those little points. Yeah. One of the biggest compliments that I've, I've gotten is that looks like there's texture. Like if I yeah. were to touch it, it You'd would be, something. I could feel something yeah. and stuff. And that's kind of what we're trying to, trying to look that's for. That's what you're going for. So I'll bring Mr. Tau Bust Man in. And I'll show you. I love this. Right, exactly what we're looking at. All right, so we've got these rust streaks, these chipping and everything like that. And what I've done is I've done a very light highlight color down in these particular areas really hard to notice right off the bat but you pull it away and you can notice that like oh there's actually some texture there you can have a lot of fun with that 
It's beautiful. And then yeah. again, this is very much a do whatever the heck you want. This is supposed to be a fun hobby. Um, what other, so tell me about the other awards you've won. I know you won Best Vehicle at LVO. Yeah, that was a huge shock. That's amazing. I really love that. So I really, really enjoy doing the competition because I'm a competitive guy. <laughs> and I like pushing myself to just be that much better every single time that I can. Um, I won, uh, some stuff at the KublaCon here. Oh, nice. In the area. Um, I've won... I won bronze for that little, the, the Marine that we showed, the Imperial yeah. Fist Jump, jump the, Captain. The yellow one? Yeah, the, the other the yeah. other yellow one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I won a bronze for him in the Masters category. Um, the tank obviously won gold, mm -hmm. best in show at LVO. Um, and he won a bronze at Nova. So awesome. it just goes to show you that, you know, depending upon where you're at, what competition you're doing, and honestly, even just the mood of the day, you can rank and score totally different in different areas and stuff. Um, I've, I've won some online contests too and stuff. Um, oh, like cool. I actually entered like a historical Didn't modeling Didn't even know one. those were around. Like, yeah. I didn't think COVID, about that. Yeah. COVID right. really, really brought those things right. up and stuff. I mean, COVID brought this sort of thing. <laughs> right, right. Ex exactly. Yeah, yeah, so that makes sense. There's, there's, some, there's some, some positives out of COVID, right? All right. So it's nothing too crazy, but you can kind of see... As we kind of turn the model around, you can see little highlights in here, in here, maybe a little bit towards the back and stuff. It really starts bringing things together. Mm -hmm. And we can really reinforce that really small texture. And I'm going to call it done, right? I don't have to go in and highlight every okay. single thing. And then here's my favorite part. We're going to use some oh, enamel yeah. rust streak. Enamel, yep. yeah. These enamel colors. I really like using them because it's just a really easy one and done type of a deal. Yeah. You can absolutely do this with other techniques. You can absolutely do this with, you know, with acrylics and stuff like that. Um, it does take just a touch more work and stuff. And For, if, to do acrylics or to do Yeah, because, okay. because of how, how quickly they dry. Yeah, that's so, true. So typically like with acrylics, you, you want to make sure maybe you might want to put a little bit of extra medium in it or like a drying retarder mm -hmm. in it. So you have a little bit more room to work with. Okay. Or a little bit more time to work with. Sorry. This just kind of, it's, it's, it's talent in a bottle. It's, yeah. it's amazing. We've heard and that term before. Yeah, that's all of, uh, that's no oil, really. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do, get your little red sure. brush. So let's put a pin for a second. Oh, yeah. Because I think we're at a good sure. stopping point in between acrylic and uh, the enamel. The enamel so, yeah. to do our segment because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we do need to get to know Devin a little bit. And mm. so it's important that we do some fun stuff together. On that note, make sure you guys vote in our poll, like all of our polls. It's very important. Um, but yeah, so Devin, you're you're a hobby pro, and you have a lot of <sighs> hobby tips for us. Pro. Um, I've just made all the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so that the rest of us don't have to. Um, you have a lot of tips for us, but yeah. do you know all of the hobby tips? Every single one of them. Okay. I'm a repository of information. I'm... No, I, I don't know all of them because everyone is going to paint differently. You can you can put a five hobby artists in a room and they're going to have 12 different opinions. Yeah. So I feel like I've got uh, enough hours put in that I can kind of talk about a little bit about anything. Mm -hmm. So. Well, we're going to put your knowledge to the test. Okay, all right. Um, I was Hit inspired me. by one of our mods. Um, he said, we, you know, talk to you about tool tips. So Just I took the tip. word tip and I ran with it. <laughs> that looks like the nozzle of an airbrush. Yeah, so we're yeah, going to yeah. quiz you on your tips. Yeah, right. there you go. I love it. So what was great about setting this up was my pictures were like this big, and then I had to crop on the tip and then blow it up. So it's even so blurry. It's, like so it's just it's a tr mess. truly just the tip. <laughs> it's just yeah, like so terrible That's quiz. definitely uh, the, the nozzle or the, the, the actually the spray this regulator guy. slash crown of an airbrush. This guy is, mm -hmm. is a pro. Yeah, he's totally right. This is an airbrush. <laughs> yeah, and there's a bunch of different styles of crowns too. Yeah, um, so like I I had never used like the basket. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, what is all this stuff like that you're doing? Because Zach Zach is our like is the airbrush guy in there our you, house. There you go. Um I'm still very like uh I, I use one, I use them and I'm like kinda comfortable with it, but I still hang back because I'm like, I don't feel like cleaning this yep. thing today. <laughs> you paint with the little the hairy stick instead, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. what is the basket like? 
The cup? Meant for, yeah. The cu- we're talking but about the cup, right? I think the cup, yeah, it like goes around, like it's almost like a shield around the front of an airbrush. Oh, okay. So you that's I mean? that's like, typically called a crown. Okay. Um, and that's really just to protect your needle. Okay. Um, a lot of these uh, airbrushes have nothing to do with our hobby. It's spray that's painting. True. Yeah, for for t-shirt design. Yeah. Um, they even used used to use it for industrial drafting, and okay. so that that little tip, um, depending upon what you're trying to do, you can actually place that on your paper or your surface and it's mm-hmm. we're talking millimeters and millimeters away and then you can create those those sketches and oh. stuff right that's usually what they're, so you can they're actually there for. hold it to the paper yeah and you would just... actually oh, that's and that would be used smart. for like industrial drafting and stuff yeah. like that to get those sharp lines and stuff um and it, it really it's it honestly is just a guard right to yeah. just make sure that you're not destroying your needles like I am wont to do. Right. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> well, okay. The only downside within our hobby is sometimes you can't see a little bit. You, know, okay. you can't see it just because of how far it might go out. That's true. Um, but that's honestly is a lot of just experimenting and figuring out what kind of works for you and stuff like that. Okay. That's good to know. I, I was like, yeah, sure, a basket. I'll like leave it <laughs> yeah. on. And yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. So I'll just leave it as there. is. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. What tip is this? Oh, it looks like the tip of a paint pot. Yeah, it looks like it's got a little nipple. At the top. <laughs> There's too many jokes for that. I mean, yeah, it looks like uh, like the, the golden acrylics that you can get at like Michael's or yeah. whatever, the hobby paint and stuff like that. And there's a ton of different ones. I mean. He's right again, yeah. you guys. He's so smart. He's got them for the monument paints and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they're tips of like a, any yeah. paint bottle. A little, you, little squeeze bottle and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you use like, I guess you do for water. You have water, but. Yeah, um, yeah. I got, Zach will also like mix his own colors and save them. Do you do that? Uh. I, I used to, like, I would go out and buy little bottles and stuff like that. If I was, especially when I was doing, like, you know, thousands of points of, uh, uh, uh for an army or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, I want this specific blend. I would then just take two pots of paint, dump them in whatever proportion and just, there we go. Cool. I got it. Yeah. I've kind of gotten to the point where I, I like to say that I've graduated, if you will, that I pretty good at color matching now. Yeah. So I don't really have to worry too much about that. Um, but actually you can kind of see right here. Meg's using it for her little, uh, little yeah. thing. Uh, this is my, although the Sharpie wore off, but this is my fancy water. Oh. It's basically like 50% water, and then I add like flow improver and dry retarder and stuff like that. So I'll do things oh. like that. So I have my own, like, I make my own little glaze medium and stuff. And Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pick your brain about that yeah. later. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right, bring them up. Two All for right, two. what's next? This is a Ooh. tricky one. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Hold on a second. That looks like the pipette for like an ink. Hmm. Right? What do you guys think? Could be. Like a, like a Liquitex ink or whatever? I guess it could be. It's Let's very see. pointy. Oh, very that, pointy. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's with the color too. I don't know. Let's see what it is. I tricked you. Oh! It's the bottom of the paintbrush. It's the bottom of the paintbrush. <laughs> it's the paintbrush tip at the yeah. bottom. Which actually I never use. <laughs> As a hobby tool. Oh, I use I, the other side. Yeah, yeah. Nine <laughs> times out of ten, I'm going to use this side. The, yeah. the side that I paid for. No, I actually know I know of a few different Tricked artist in. friends who like using this to mix in their airbrush. Oh, I think I might have done that before. Oh, I hate that. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no like, stop it. But, you know, to each their own and everything like that. They, they are allowed to be wrong, too. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, I don't I like that. <laughs> what don't you like about it? I, I'd rather use my junk Sturdy. brush because oh. this is this is like, right? And I'm putting it against an expensive needle in an airbrush. That's true. I'd rather, I'd rather I softly like a needle caress going it. Yeah, it. those they they add up yeah. in price and stuff. You Be know, gentle with it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right, exactly. So like, just sitting there, just smacking at it. I just <laughs> no, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> oh. All right, all right. Two for three. All right, next tip. Oh, that's a drill. That's it's easy. Narwhal. Yeah. 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 yeah the, the, the narwhal of our hobbies and stuff like that. And that's a that's a little guy too for the pin vice. It is a little teeny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little hobby drill. Um, you were commenting on our on our vacuum and our vortex. Yeah. Um, Rudy Picardo was our the fan who sent us mm-hmm. that stuff. He also sent us a drill, which that's was really awesome. nice. I love yeah. the googly eyes you added to these. Things yeah. Too. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. No, those those drills are, are fantastic. Um, I've got a couple little hand hand vice ones, and then mm-hmm. I found this on Amazon. Yeah, I found it on Instagram. We found it on this, that, or whatever. Found it on Amazon. It's called a Wow Stick. Okay. It's amazing. It's basically like the size of this this right here, 
and it's just an L, uh, uh, you know, a USB charged little drill that you push the button and it just. Bzzz, yeah. And they're fantastic, yeah, especially fun. if you're doing a ton of pinning and stuff. Yeah. Oh, they're great. I love That's them. That's a new one for me. Yeah. Pinning, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, when it's you. It's like man. This Neverada model doesn't want to stay. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah. when you're doing a lot of commission mm-hmm. stuff, like, because I, I did commission work for just shy of two years or something mm-hmm. like that, you kind of need to explode the models a little bit and you need to keep track of them. Yeah. So I would have like a piece of cardboard or a cork sheet or something like that. Oh, hi there. Yeah. And, you know, pin them all in there so I can keep track of them because I am very easily able to lose a lot of these right. things and stuff. <laughs> all right, we got another one? All right, next. <sighs> Whoa. Yeah. I think guys, the, the blue background's throwing me. Help him out with this one. This is a tough one. Yeah. Can we go prices right? Can I get some uh, help from the audience? Come yeah. On. We need to throw a lifeline for Devin. I'm going to go throw this cat out <laughs> while well, you uh, take your time thinking about oh it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is this. <sighs> this honestly looks like as though <laughs> somebody had. Yeah, see, a unicorn horn tip. It looks like it's a broken hobby knife, right? Like it's been oh, yeah. broken up and everything it's like that. Been, it's been getting into it too much. I think this is a trick. I think this is probably part of a model. You think this is part of a model? Maybe. Yeah, like I think it's probably model? part of like a what model. What kind of model would this be part of? I was thinking about like an AOS model. Like that's one of the little the little things that flay off the side okay. or whatever. I was, maybe Deepkin or something yeah. like that. Let's see. Nah, you're right. I'm, I'm starting oh. with you. It's an iceberg. <laughs> Oh, hey, look. Emily got, yeah. it, got it right. Oh. <laughs> nice. That's my sister. Hi, Emily. Everyone yeah. say hi to Emily. Well, <laughs> I love that I she I love the iceberg. It. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right, last one in our quiz. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was wondering if you would know this one. Man, this, was this taken with a, a potato? <laughs> Holy cow. Taken with a potato. I know. These are so <sighs> hard to see. <laughs> They're so hard to see. It looks kind of metallic. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's true. It does look kind of metallic. <laughs> you know what? Now I'm looking at it. It looks like a mold line remover. Yeah, like a mold right. line scraper. You're right. It yeah, is, it's the mold line remover. I, you know, fun fun fact. Yeah. I use that for everything other than removing mold lines. Do you really? What does that mean? What What are those other things? I I well, I use it to pry things. Um, okay. I use it for weathering actually because it's really really stiff and it's got those really okay. hard edges. Um, there's a couple different types of weathering. Like one is called subtractive, where you're literally removing paint. Yeah. So you get something like that, like along my along the towel drone, and just put it down and just actually literally li- literally scraping yeah. the paint off and stuff. I use it for that. I use it for sculpting. Okay. And I put it in water and stuff and do a little bit of sculpting. So I don't really use everything, it for, but but the mold line. Yeah, yeah. I tend to use my knife just because that's okay. what I have in my hand. You Got know? it. That's that's yeah. all it is. <laughs> I use this thing all the time. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic! It's one of the best things that said it all yeah. created for the hobby. Yeah. Um, so that was fun. Good job on your quiz. Most pointlessly single purpose, <laughs> no real reason to exist tool going, and yet it's so, so good. So good. It is good. I That's use the encapsulation it all the it. time. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Um, oh my gosh. So I hope you guys liked that. Um, I Ooh, wanted a little to tricky over there. really quickly remind you guys, um, we have... Oh, Something yeah. special coming up for our mandrels. If you're a mandrel or, you know, you want to become a mandrel, now's a good time. Devin's going to be running some workshops in our Discord. Yeah, exclusively for the mandrels. Um, and, Meg, you took a poll just to see what, what kind what of the things people, people were into, wanting yeah. and stuff. And um, there was a lot of people that were looking for, like, that kind of quick and dirty NMM. Um, yeah. I, I typically like to it's say... It's a popular yeah, topic. It's, it's a huge topic. Um, I typically like to say... If you're more focused in the war gaming, it's how to make your power swords swing. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is like, what sound does a sword make when you yeah. pull it out? Swing. And it also has that nice yeah. glow. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And um, for the choosing the right colors, um, that that that's a huge topic that you can really simplify and really just get rid of that you know kind of mentality that's blocking you. Of like it's not the perfect color, yeah. and just some small easy tips to just kind of. Get something that's looking really good and really effective and stuff yeah. like that. And so that I'll be talking a little bit more about that one. That one's going to be a little bit more of me showcasing some stuff, talking, interacting with people and stuff like that, and not like the like the live chat and stuff. And then the the quick and dirty NMM is going to be a lot more hands on, where I'm actually right. showcasing certain things and certain tips and tricks and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really. That's going to be awesome. We get people asking us all the time, like, "What colors would you use?" And yeah. I'm like, 
Well, let's start with what colors you like, right, and yeah. then we'll talk color uh, yeah, schemes. Yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, like it's gonna be nice to hear this. Um, yeah, yeah, and just little... who thinks about this all the time. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't <laughs> sleep when I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just just little things about just like you know, oh, this is the color that I'm thinking of, and then what kind of goes around it. Yeah. Right? That's usually my approach. I really like I, this. Calls to me to be purple. All right, let's find some colors to kind of go around the yeah. purple and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. kind of what it's going to be going around and stuff. Because honestly, any color is the right choice. As long that's as it's true. not sprue gray. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys are not a mandrel, um, but you're curious, um, you're, you're mandrel curious, uh, this is a good time to sign up. It's eight bucks for a month. And then you get these, you'll get these four workshops. We've talked about two. Yeah. Devin's planning out two more. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm see getting, how you guys like it. I'm but getting prepped a, for Adepticon and stuff. So yeah. I really only commit to two it's a right now. Big but. thank you for yeah. everyone who's um, gone out of their way to show extra support. Speaking of John McArdle, thank you for your 20 gifted memberships ooh, and our party lights. Ooh, that was great. Ooh, we love that. Ooh. Um, yeah, this is a very special week for us, Devin, because we're launching our AOS gaming. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. That's awesome. We just awesome. kicked that off. So we have like five games this week. All right. I, I, oh can I gosh. put a request in at some point? Yeah. Put some orcs in? Oh, definitely. Because I want somebody to be screaming wah on the screen. I, I did. I did played a little bit of AOS, and that was my favorite thing to play because I'd just be sitting there talking about my strategy, and then i just go, and then my war boss is going to yeah. wah! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's always so much fun. We do have some orc players. Good. So we'll, Good. we'll have some orcs on the stream. And yeah. then make it mandatory that they're wahing. They need a wah. It's, it's not an orc player if you're right. not wahing. So. True. That's fair. Yeah. So thanks again, John. Thanks again, everybody, for hanging out. Um, but we need to get back to this. Yeah, So we absolutely. were about to start with our enamel paints. Yeah. And so um, I really like the AK streaking stuff. Okay. Um, because it's just kind of easy right out of the bottle, you know? Um, you can use other things with it. You can use oils and other products and stuff. Um, but it's just real easy right about it. As a matter of fact, I've got like five bottles of this. Um, just because I love it so much and use it so much. Yeah. All right. Couple, one rule with this. This is some uh, odorless. Don't lick the brush. Well, <laughs> you would lick the brush for a surprise. I've done it before and I'm like, shoot. Yeah, yeah you're like, ah. This is not that kind of thing. Am I going to die? Yeah. yeah. So the, the, I have the odorless white spirit thinner. Okay. Um, just keep the cap on. I've dropped oh, it. Oh. Yeah. So when it. you're going to use it, this is, this is what we use to thin the paint or to clean off, uh, clean off our brushes and stuff. So typically just open it up. Wipe it off and then just put it back on because we just don't want to. We don't want to spill it because that right. will that has the potential to eat through some paint and stuff. We don't we don't <laughs> want to do that everything. unintentionally. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is by far my favorite part. Okay. Because what we're gonna do? Oh, let's show these red versus oh red yeah. Versus white. This is so smart, guys. I kept mixing up my brushes, right? So I have this really nice expensive artist opus brush. And I would stick it in the, the oil and everything like that. And it, it will slowly degrade them ruin it, yeah. and ruin them a little bit faster, I should say. Yeah. So I specifically went out and I bought some red brushes. So if I'm grabbing a brush and I grab a white brush, it's I know wrong. that's that it's, it's wrong. Yeah. And you should punish yourself as a result. Slap yourself with it. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's just a really easy thing for me to just know that this is the right brush for this product and stuff. Yeah. I so love... Not to lick it. Don't lick the red brush. I'm just feeling spicy. Go ahead and lick it. <laughs> um, so I like to just load up the brush. Okay. Right? Be brave, be bold, just load it up. You're just all good it. to go. And we're going to make little little uh, tip taps everywhere, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that streaking effect. You know, you can kind of see that little bit of right in there. You can see the, the rust kind of running yeah. down. If you ever see like a really old truck or an old car, yeah. right? You can see that, and it, it also adds a really fun filter and, and uh, adding color to it and stuff. So on this, especially at this big area right here, right, I'm just going to add a couple of random little bloop, 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 bloop. Just some big bloop, spots. Bloop, bloop. Oh my God, you're just going for it. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, scares me. Here's, the, here's the best part. But this is the best thing about a nap. Look at that. It doesn't dry. Oops. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so stressed out. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> this is why I like this product because, oh no, I accidentally put my entire thumb in it. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak it with those spirits. I literally just disobeyed my rule. <laughs> there we go. And I, it's, it's soaked with all of this and I'm just going to wipe a lot of it up. Now, this is going to have a small filter effect to it. 
that's why we brought this. Let's use a big brush. It's got a small filter to it, right? So you'll add a little bit of that brown. And what I like to do, I like to take this nice makeup brush. I put a little bit of that spirits in it, and I'll just kind of pull this down. This is the magic of these paints. Okay. You can kind of see it over the top of your hand. Yeah. Oh! It's real shiny right look how now. how nice. But look at it. You got that nice little yeah. streak and stuff. Hey, let's do it this way. And we're being very, 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 very yeah, soft very with ginger. it. Very ginger. Very ginger. Yeah. Okay. Let me right? Throw, let, me, let me throw some more in here then. Throw it. Oops. <laughs> there. Oops. Oh, my gosh. Look at you. What a mess. You clumsy, clumsy, clumsy. <laughs> what a fool. So if you allow it to dry, you're going to get a little bit more of that paint, and you're going to get a little bit heavier of, uh, of a streak. Mm -hmm. If you keep it a little bit wet, it's going to be a little bit more soft and subtle. You're okay, good. So you put it in, yeah. Yep, right. be very, very soft with this, right? This is a, a more of a subtractive method. You're removing this paint. Right. Oh, you'd be harder than that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's I okay. I go a little it harder. Is, yeah, a little, a little, little, little gingerness. Uh, never hurt anybody, but, you know, sometimes you got to get it done. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a little bit more. I love all of this Shoot, stuff. Shoot, man, this looks amazing. Right? <laughs> I'm like, I did this. <laughs> yeah. And here's the, here's the best it. part is you can then get smaller brush heads if you want. We're, we're using kind of a big one, right? You sure. can even use this tiny little brush and you can go in there and pinpoint exactly where you're wanting these to go. Guys, look what your mag did. Woohoo! I'm so proud of myself. Look at that. It looks great. Actually, that was very easy. Right. I was very scared. The, the only thing is, you yeah. know, you've got to let the, the spirits dry a little bit and uh, do your thing. And here's the best part about it, too. If you go, hmm, don't like that part right here. You can, you have a small, you have a, a shorter, a longer work period yeah. than you do with acrylic. And you can just kind of come in there and you can wipe a lot of that up. You can move it around a little bit. Right? Let's put this, I'm going to pull this down. And see, I'm using a really thin, precise brush yeah. for those real thin, precise lines that you're wanting to do, right? And imagine he's whizzing through the grim, dark future. He's like, I ain't got time for cleaning. I'm just going to whiz past and get racing stripes. Okay. So we'll add a little bit more spirits into our brush. One little pro tip with this stuff um, you can kind of see how shiny this brush is. Yeah. That's a little too much spirits. Okay. You'll erase a lot of it. So I typically like to put it on and just dab it on a paper towel. So it's just lightly soaked. It's just got a light, light, light amount of that spirits to it. And I'll go in and just play around. All right. So I'll take this, throw that down, and just imagine the motion. This is one thing I really like. It conveys a lot of fun motion. Yeah. It's just going, Nyow! and it's middle of raining, and there's all this grossness coming around and stuff. And one of my favorite things with this stuff is the taste. No, is the fact... <laughs> <laughs> is the for, fact $20, <laughs> for $20, you can watch us eat enamel paint. <laughs> just kidding, you can't. I do that for free all the we time. We won't do it. Um, Don't do it. Do We're it. not doing it. <laughs> I will. No, I will. Devin. Don't, um, don't do it. <laughs> is if you if you look at it and you go, ah, you know, I thought I liked it. I don't really like it. You can really come in and make those those repairs, those fixes as you want. Um, one thing I want to point out, and I was very intentional with this. Yeah. I left this part out right here. I never touched it with any of the spirits. Look how much brighter it looks yeah. in comparison to everything else. That might be a wrong, if you will. Um, because it now the tones are very different. Sure. So what you could do is you could come in there with a very small amount of this and wipe it over everything to mm. match that tone a little bit. Well, that's a little too dark. Let's put more of that spirits to it, and we'll just kind of wipe it away. And so now, if you look, the tone matches quite yeah. a bit better, right? Yeah. And that's that's kind of what we're wanting. The front... I haven't touched at all, so I'll come back over here and I'll add that tone back over. Yeah. That way you kind of have like a contiguous, continuous, um, you know, just overall color and scheme and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, this is a back and forth method. And what I, what I like a lot about it is that it's, 
you can do one and done. You did that first brush and you went, I really like this. Yeah, you could have like, just oh, left it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you could have yeah. just left it. Yeah. Um, but you can really just kind of go in there and play around with whatever it is you're wanting and you can just kind of do the damn thing. It's kind of funny like how relaxing this step is. I mean, yeah. the weathering step, right? Yeah. Like it's actually not that. It's not that bad, right? Like it doesn't, it's not stressful yeah. at all. No, yeah. it, it, and, it, and it really shouldn't be. And then especially when you're using some of these products, it it just removes that all off your shoulders. So you're not yeah. like, oh, it has to be right the first time. Yeah. You look at it and you go, mm, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you I still kind of have that bit. tone. I, I was a little bit heavier with that side. I removed those streaking. Yeah. I'm happier with that, right? It's so much just this back and forth and right. you can have so much fun with it. Saray asks, hey, Saray, have you tried out the new Villainy inks? Villainy inks? Yeah. I haven't heard of this. I've never heard. Is that is that the actual brand, Villainy? No. Or is that the new inks from 8K? Saray's on top of all, like, hobby supply world. He's so good at yeah, knowing I, what's coming. So I, my, I'm my, like, tell me more, Saray. <laughs> I, I love experimenting with new things, right? Maybe that might even be a little thing we talked about of, like, how to use certain types of paints. Um, my a big... A big Depth is just because this is what I learned with is an actual artist ink. Um, I tend to really, really like inks as a standalone paint or an additive and stuff mm -hmm. like that just because they're so heavily pigmented and stuff. Um, but I, I want to look into villainy. Yeah. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, so no, I, I haven't. Yeah, I'm curious what brand they're from. Yeah, if, it, if that's or, the, like, if that's is the it actual a line brand. Or, or, yeah. yeah. Because I've seen the new AK ones, and I am eager to try some of them out. I already have a lot of more neutral inks, mm -hmm. lots of browns and stuff like that, because I like to paint in browns. Sure. Um, but I've, I've been interested in trying out new different types of colors and stuff like that. Made by Grimdark Compendium. Grimdark Compendium? No, I've never heard of them. Oh, okay. I'll have yeah. to make a note of that and try them Were out. Were they at LVO? Were they... Where'd you hear them, sorry? Yeah. Thanks for the question, though, sir. Yeah, yeah. I guess on wow, back you, foot. you stumped me on that one. Oh my gosh! All right, let's see yours. Okay. Let's 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 put this up there on camera. Ooh, okay. Your students. You know what's what's <laughs> interesting is you've got these darker spots towards the back. They almost read as though like maybe they just singed through a little bit of fire or something like yeah. that, right? Just ducked under some fire and stuff. Super cool. Okay, great. Yeah. One thing I would <laughs> what just should I fix? one thing yeah. I would just say to add is look at this right here. Okay. It's a little overly bright in comparison oh, to everything right. else. So we'll just put, we'll just take a little tip tap right here and we'll just put a little bit of that in there. Take some of the, the spirits and we'll just kind of feather it out. So now it has a little yeah. bit more of a contiguous tone, right? That's fair. Yeah. It looks a little bit more like it belongs, if you Thanks. will. Thanks. I want to showcase this too. Look at this ugly thing that we started with. It's true. Versus what this, you know, beautiful, ugly thing that yeah. we have now. I was going to say, it's still ugly, but it's a better ugly. It's a better ugly, yeah. <laughs> so this kind of leads me into my 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 main point with weathering. Yeah. Is the model does have to be, a, a, at least a part of it, has to be to a level of completeness. Sure. Because weathering is the penultimate step. The only thing that goes after weathering is OSL. Because the light is going to hit everything, mm -hmm. right? So with weathering, right. you really want to save it towards the end. Right. Um, Which can be scary. 100%. Because like, now you're making it dirty. I have all these models where I've done like, I felt um, a pretty like smooth, like clean paint job. And I'm like, eh, Do I really want to mess this up? I don't think they're muddy. <laughs> I think they're, they found a way to stay clean. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. No, they're polishing it. all the time. I need to do it, though. I need to go and I have like a Neferata and her cape is just mm -hmm. like pristine and i'm like no she's a dead lady well, like she's gonna get dirty exactly well one <laughs> of the things you can do dirty. is you put so much time in those ca capes are a beautiful yeah. part of the model right just take a little like a like a little dry brush and just yeah. the very edges of it okay it's been gradually dusting across the floor and stuff yeah so one of the things i want to show you there's a little here's a little sneak peek of my golden demon yes. piece that i'm doing right so there's lots of weathering and it's very dingy and, and, and everything. And it's not fully finished, right? Oh, here's that. It's This piece is not finished, but I each of these panels are at a level of completeness that I really like. So then I started doing the weathering and stuff like mm. that, right? So all this other stuff, I need to still keep, I still need to put paint on and stuff like that. 
Um, so it's really flexible in whatever it is you're trying to do. You don't have to have the whole model complete. Right? Yeah. It's just that, that section needs to be to a level that you're like, you're ready. this is done. I'm ready for it. And stuff. Yeah. Okay. Typically, I like to make sure we clear coat this in some shape or fashion. Um, just because if you do tend to do more streaking grime, like I've got another another color. Okay. I have these like little earth effects that what you can do, you can kind of splatter it all along yeah. and stuff like that. Or you get like a toothbrush or you get like a little brush and you just kind of flick it around right. and stuff. These are also in that same solvent base, right? Mm -hmm. So as you're trying to play with those, you're going to inherently mix or take off certain parts of paint. So if you know that you're going to continue to paint in those and you're like, I'm happy and I want to keep this here, just give it a quick little varnish, right? It can be okay. matte. It can be gloss. It can be whatever you're Which wanting. Which I'm assuming we can't do right now because they're enamels, right? Uh, no, no, we certainly can. We just we have to make sure it dries. Let them dry for it. Well, this yeah. is a good time to... Yeah. We can... Um, do our next thing on our list. Yeah, absolutely. Which is share about our hobby challenge. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you'll like this. So we have a hobby challenge happening in our Discord. This is new for you, so you don't know who this person is. This is our mod, Soups. He actually inspired the segment. He doesn't know it, but just by saying the word tip, I, I was inspired. Um, Slaying the demon horde. Yeah. Um, so every month we have a different theme happening in our Discord, um, and you enter by attaching the hashtag crowing for it. There's a reason for that. It's because Soups will be painting um, one twelfth of a crow, Castellan crow model, to one. the winner's liking. So each month we have a different winner, a and a each winner <laughs> chooses, like, okay, here's how you're going to paint this piece of the yeah, model, Yes. Yeah. And then he has to do it. Oh. That was his choice, by the way. We that's amazing. That, yeah. So basically, he's going to have 12 different yes. color schemes and styles yes. and stuff like that. That's amazing. Yeah. That's going to look like a Crazy. beautiful hot mess. It's going to be great. And then at the end of the year, one person gets to win it. That's amazing. Pretty cool. I don't know what you're going to do That's with it. That's so cool. You probably put it on your mantle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Front and center in your house. <laughs> Did um, you pay to get that paint? No, I won it no. in the contest. Okay, cool. I deserve this. I've worked for <laughs> yeah, this. I've worked for yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and this month's theme, of course, is love and romance for February. So get to painting, guys. We have about half the month left. Um, and we only have one entry this month. I think people are struggling. Is with love. What's the matter with you guys? You guys are great people. You're full of love. We love you. Paint some slanesh. Love can be anything you Different type you want. of love, yeah. but you can paint some slanesh yeah, and like, just be good. It could be like Whips Nurgle and, and love of burgers, love of uh, boogers. Yeah, Ew. it could be anything. Yeah, I know. I, I'll pass on the I'll pass on the Nurgle thing. Yeah. That's, that's gross. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say burgers. I guess that's a Freudian slip. Yeah. Those of you who know me, that's fun. That's really cool. Yeah. That's super oh, cool. Soup I like says that. Says we have three entries. Great. That's great. We have some yeah. All right. Right. So you got first, second, and third them, now. Keep them coming, guys. Um, cool. And then we need to end this poll, our very important poll. You guys have like ten seconds. Actually, you don't because uh, we're on a delay, and and you're gonna miss me saying Pencils that. Pencils down. So we're gonna end the poll. The poll is what goes best with weather. With weather. <laughs> it's either soup, <laughs> clothes, clothes you, you or bats or bats. Ooh, well, and I guess that's, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, soup chat is, went with soup. Soup is too obvious, though. Well, okay. Okay, you got a little cup of soup and stuff like that. Be be but be different. Be what is weather? Does anyone really know? Oh my gosh! Like what weather? We need to crack the code here. Are we what, talking what about? Weather? I mean, what if it's a sunny day out? Yeah, Isn't it's one hundred and twelve. I don't want soup. You don't want soup. No, I don't want yeah. soup. We don't know what kind of weather we're even talking about. I like the you. Yeah. So the, all like, it's in there with the love theme. It's all sappy and true. romantic. But don't sleep on the bats because <laughs> <laughs> what type of bats are we talking about? Are we yeah. talking about baseball weather? Are we talking about spooky vampires? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they didn't know who was going to be. It could have been you or me reading this. So either of us could have said you. Or well, it's like you, my vote them is, saying it to us. My vote is clothes. I, I also voted clothes. <laughs> I, I voted it. clothes. Yeah. I was like, you don't know what the weather's going to be, but you have to have the right clothes for 100%, 100%. it. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. I just got finished snowboarding yesterday. It yeah. was 20 degrees you outside. You need the right clothes. clothes for that weather. Yeah. I didn't, didn't care about soup. I wanted to be, yeah. you know, warm and not while you're wet. snowboarding. Yeah. That's, that's kind of a tipping hazard. You're snowboarding down and just spilling yeah. hot soup on yourself. Yeah. Don't want that. So. 
that was our uh, that was our very important poll. Thanks for participating. <laughs> now this is the hard hitting facts here at the Hobby Collab. <laughs> Oh my we gosh. now have answered the age-old question of what goes, what best, goes best with weather. weather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. Um, I agree, Emily. Bats is where it's at. Yeah. All right. I mine still. I can see like a little bit of sheen. That's where okay. It's not quite dry. Just don't touch that. Okay. Just don't touch that spot. We'll we'll be fine. Mine's. Okay. I have a little bit of sheen, just in kind of a little crack over in here. Uh, other than that, we're we're pretty good. Um, we can hit it with a matte varnish. Sure. Um, we can hit it with a gloss varnish. I brought both of them, but for this is for sake of demonstration and stuff like that. So let's just get into it. All right. Um, so this is now up to really up to your flavor. Let's start adding in like a dark orangey brown. Okay. So here you go. Thanks. I have a little bit prepped on my palette, and we're gonna need a nice sharp brush. And one of the things I always like to mention in my in my courses or whenever I'm just rambling on and on and on about about rust and weathering is that rust is the cancer of metal or oxidation no. if we it's, it's the cancer of metal no yeah. it really is right no, sad. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's really like hit it hard <laughs> let's make it a downer no it, it just it, it slowly eats away and yeah. rots whatever that metal is right mm-hmm. so rust is uh like iron oxide right that's yeah. for um you know iron or steel and stuff whereas if you have something like brass or copper it's more of like that verdigris that greenish kind of right. verdigris right the 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 nilac oxide is really fantastic and stuff and we can kind of show a little bit of that on your stormcast okay. if that's all right yeah of course um so great. this is now really up to your flavor and it also helps showcase the material as well hey licking the right brush i am not licking the the red one. i had to stop myself a couple times yeah, you're like, with the red. i was like yeah. i wasn't gonna do that <laughs> yeah you got, i wasn't gonna put you have more willpower than i do um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, this is very selective. Okay. okay? We're going to find typically the bigger chunks of damage where we've done our brown and we're going to add little, little, we're going to tip tap a little bits of orange in, into some of these bigger chunks. Okay. And that's just going to kind of help showcase, um, what the material is. So in this particular instance, Right, it's probably ceramite or some sort of fusion alloy. I don't know how ceramite rusts or if it even does, but it's going to be some sort of steel or iron. So in these big areas is where I'm going to kind of focus. Um, and let's just say that this part right here has been damaged and it has been neglected. Right? Okay. It's been in it. It hasn't had a chance to get a, a coat of paint on it and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it kind of towards the center and make sure to not cover all of the brown. These are in like those larger... In the larger ones, yeah. Because okay. these other small ones, maybe that just happened. Yeah. Right? It, it's your story. You Got tell it. it, right? Okay. So I want to show in these <clears> bigger <throat> areas, maybe we're in a really hostile weathered environment, right? They didn't have their soup right. or their clothes. Right. Or bats. Or bats. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine leaving without your bat? In this weather? No. <laughs> Um, and so you're just going to kind of pick out those little bits of that uh, kind of brownish orange to just kind of showcase that that is older, right? Right. In the sense that that damage is older. This is actually newer rust, right? The first part, maybe that brown was a bit of that primer. Sure. Or maybe it was a gray primer that's just rusted over. It's been scratched down to the bare metal or something like that. Um... And this is this like, now is it's had time to spend with the weather because it wasn't weather. wearing clothes. Or it didn't have a bat. And so now it's rusting. Oh, definitely Bale. Definitely. Bats? Definitely Christian yeah, Bale. Yeah, who is your favorite. Batman? Christian Bale's your Batman? Chris, oh, t- t- totally. I just don't like the voice that much. No? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say I'm still beholden to Michael Keaton. Oh, I mean, Keaton's a timeless classic he's, he's for my sure. He's Batman. I just like the grit. Not Affleck, though. I think he looks okay if he were like, oh, I'm cosplaying as Batman. Great. Yeah. But I just didn't, I didn't like, you didn't disguise your voice at all. You. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We forgot about Adam West, huh? Good call out. Oh, him. man. Adam He's a pretty West. good Batman, but that's a different kind of Batman. Yeah, Adam West. Very, I would love to see Adam West as Batman meet. Christian Bale as Batman. Like, actually, we're the same person, you know? <laughs> That'd be awesome. 
It's all goofy. Very different. So this starts changing the overall tone, right? Now, it's really kind of hard to see in certain areas. Let's, let's check out. Yeah, please. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All good? Right? Okay. We're, we're all good, right? So mine's a, mine's a little bit softer. It's a little bit more subtle. Okay. Um, Right? But what I will do is I will add in my next step, which is adding this kind of darkish orange. It's kind of like an ochre orange color. I'll show you kind of on my on my brush, right? Yeah. So then we do we kind of repeat the same step again to taste. And I'll put this in the very, very center. Is this for the next color? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You're wanting that kind of was it medium rust? Something like that? Yeah, this is um M I G. Yeah, MIG. MIG, acrylic mm -hmm. color. Yeah, so that's medium rust, yeah. So yeah. you can use any type of, you know, like light, lightish orange like this. It works really well. And then this is going to be something that you put even even more sparse. And so we're just going to put the tiny little pieces here. We're going to put it right in the center. This is going to be the newest rust in our current collection. Okay, so it doesn't quite fill as much space as the... Not at all. Color we put yeah, before. Yeah, so these particular parts have not been serviced and have not been cared for in quite a while. And I like adding these. Um, one, again, tells a little bit of a story, but it also shows extra colors. And who doesn't like it's true. colors? There's no huge, fast, hard, hard and fast rule with it, except for... If you're adding those 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 variations, going from that like chocolatey kind of brown to that orange brown to that yellow, you, you do want to kind of reduce in size. It's just like yeah. when you're when you're building up your highlights, right? You highlight all the way over here, and then you shrink how much you're actually highlighting um, as you kind of change the colors and stuff. Right. So I'm gonna go back in with my orange. I'm gonna pick out some spots. Let's do this here. Brett says, just finally joining, I didn't realize you were planning to paint Tao today, Devin. <laughs> I added the accusatory tone. He's a Tao I like player. That. Yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah. No, I love He's... Tao. I think they're fantastic. They kind of got me started in the yeah. hobby. I really liked them, but I was really intimidated by them. Really? So I started with Adeptus Mechanicus instead, right? Okay. I went still robot-y and, and everything like that. And then finally I was like, you know, I'm brave enough. I'll pick up some Tao. <laughs> what, um scared you about the towel like painting towel um well this specific guy this ghost keel was what i fell in love with i yeah. loved it and i was like i won't be able to do it justice i had that fear of mm -mm. I, like i even had the kit i bought it with no intention of ever painting it for a while really i was, I was terrified yeah because i was like i want this to look awesome like it looks so freaking cool right i mean like yeah it's, it's a big it's dope. robot monster yeah it's dope and I, I, I fell into that, that trap where we all do of just, not yet, not Eventually. yet. And then it just sits somewhere yeah. and then it doesn't do it. And then I got, um, I got one of these as a, as a gift, right? This, this towel bust. Yeah. Um, and I freaking loved it and I went, okay, I gotta, I gotta try this out and stuff. And I'd been playing around with the idea of doing my towel and I wanted to do beaten up towel. Because you don't see that anywhere. It's always no, because they're always hiding and shooting you, and yeah, you and can't defend yourself. It's terrible. Someone's a little salty. <laughs> <laughs> Zach plays towel. I'm surrounded by towel people, right? And so when I was trying to learn, um, it was seventh ed. I was trying to learn mm -hmm. 40k, and That's I played Tyranids, and I was like, well. Why do I bother? Like you're just gonna shoot me. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> before I can't I can even get hit to you. you. Yeah, because yeah. they have yeah. no weapon. No, like barely. Well, that was shoot. that was the age of formations and hard, stuff. And yeah. if you were like, I'm gonna be really mean and just turtle up. Yeah. Trust me, I know. I got. <laughs> so. I got. I got the the short end of the stick on that. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't start Tau until towards the end of eighth ed. Okay. Um. So I had a lot of time with the Depths of Mechanicus and Space Wolves and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, I painted up that. I wanted to paint up that bus, and I've been toying around with the idea of doing a dirty towel. Mm -hmm. So this was literally this 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 guy right here was literally like my test scheme of. Okay. I want to paint it. You kind of started like that. with a with a uh, bust as your practice. That's yeah. fair because well, you know when you're painting an army, you're like, I want to play with it. This is my main piece. Mm -hmm. I always think of like, oh, a bust is like a 
scary, like, important, like, painting project, like... Yeah, I mean... Yeah. He's not that scary. But, um, I mean, he's shouting at you, but no, maybe I... he's shouting, like, I love you! <laughs> you forgot your clothes for this weather. <laughs> this weather. <laughs> it's really rough. Yeah, and, I mean, I had already... I had, I had been starting to get into more... Um, dedicated figures that has nothing to do with gaming. So yeah. it wasn't as huge of a leap for me. Right. I mean, I know for some people uh, that's, well, why would I buy this if I'm not going to have any I'm extra use play with it. for yeah. it? I strongly encourage people, find something that you really, really like that you have no um, interest in playing with. It's just cool. Whether that's a different faction, whether it's uh, mm-hmm. a completely different model oh, yes. in, entirely and stuff. That, that's totally fine. Yeah. And you get a little bit of extra... Um, like, you like creative practice. flex yeah, and practice. Exactly. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I bought an old demon prince model at a like a. Ooh, there's Megs. Yeah, that's me. And a little bit of that orange in there. Yeah. Demon prince model. Go on. No, no worries. Um, it's like the old for the old kit at right before right when they came out with the new kit. Uh uh-huh. It's twenty bucks, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna kit bash this. Like, yeah. I'm never gonna play with chaos. I don't think. I'm never gonna like play with this demon prince. Yeah. Probably. Just have fun so with it. So I'm just going to paint it, and I'm going to kit bash it and yeah. goof around. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and with the advent of 3D printing, too, mm-hmm. you really can just, oh, this cost me a nickel to print. No big deal, yeah. right? I'm just going to play around with it because it kind of looked cool, you know? Yeah. Brett was asking um, what these drones were because he didn't recognize them. Because um, he tricked you, Brett. I did trick you. I printed them. I um, printed these it. are actually part for of... Lessons. A, yeah, for lessons. Yeah, for lessons. They're great. Yeah. Uh, I got them from uh, Piper. Piper makes. Okay. So yeah, you got they, the STL. Yeah, they, okay. they, they have a they have a, a, a well they're getting into more Eldar stuff now, but they're exclusively different, just like towel alternatives and stuff. Um, and these are, I think, some of the basis for some Remora drones. Okay, I was gonna say like yeah. these would be super cool as bases. Is that what oh, you said? Oh, no, like, no. Like the, literal bases. The, the, no. This, but you're saying like of the drone actually, itself. No, like, this would be, that would be. Kind of like a cool looking little like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bent, damage And then you just and, like, and then it's floating. It's always floating or yeah, something. Yeah. Anyway. No, this was like the, yeah. the, the base layer of like a Remora drone. <laughs> it's just, it just got little wings and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I scaled it down just because that way I can print, you know, it's I don't know, I print 20 cheaper. on a plate. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can just put them in a box that are already, you know, painted up and stuff like that. I can use it for classes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's where I got it from. So good question on that one. Yeah. Captain Mannerings, thank you for your uh, super chat. Ooh, good to ooh, see you ooh, on this ooh, Sunday. Ooh. Um, and the party lights. Yeah. They're going. They, oh, they, they are. are. Yeah. Um, I'm so focused. Since the hobby collab is all about health and safety. Yeah, you see our OSHA poster. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, thank goodness. Can you, yeah, otherwise, we, I don't know what we would do. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the x-ray of your <laughs> thumb on your Instagram, please? By yeah. Six. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, so... Captain Mannerings. <laughs> great, <laughs> great that. question. It is, uh, it's a fun story are now. Are on the third color now? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm adding it because my dots are a lot smaller. You may not necessarily want to add to oh, it, okay. right? It just depends on the overall color variety. Sure. But here I added Let's little see. bits here and there, right, right in here. Oh, and there. okay, yeah. Yours it just is a add, lot smaller. Yeah. Than mine. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to do it a little bit more, more tasteful and stuff. Um, I'm not saying yours is gaudy. I'm, like, I'm saying yeah, that was I the, that was the I style hear, I was I going you. for. Um, yeah. So with my thumb, actually, it was this thumb. I've got a nice ring scar right here. Um, I was doing a project, and I love using piano wire. Okay. For pinning because it's so small oh. and it's perfectly straight. I don't need to think about it. So this, over the course of several months, I would clip some of it and it would get dangerously sharp. And I would nick myself here and there. Sure. Who hasn't, you know, bled for the blood god, right, in this mm-hmm. hobby. Uh, and so I went, well, okay, I got to be careful with that. So I'll hold it with pliers. Yeah. I had one time where I clipped it and it flung off and it went whizzed past my head and went, ah, I'm going to wear some safety glasses whenever I'm using this. Yeah. So on this Friday night, I got my music wire all said and done. I got my little pliers. I I got my, my safety glasses on and my dog happened to be in the room and I went, I'm going to be even safer. Instead of clipping it on the top of my table, I'm going to put it under my table. So if it does fly, it's just going to hit the wall, mm-hmm. and I'll find it. No big deal. Very safe. Right. I measured Makes out an, sense. I measured out an inch of what I needed, and I put it in there, put it underneath, looked, made sure, clip, and all of a sudden I went, ow. 
Oh, God. And I thought I nicked myself. I was bleeding. I was like, okay, well. So I grabbed, I keep some alcohol swabs and I just kind of swabbed it all over. Didn't think anything of it. I was like, oof, that, that kind of stung. Yeah, it must have. 30 minutes go by and my thumb is now double its size. And I went, ooh, boy. And I started looking at my thumb and I went, oh, maybe I kind of have like a shard in there or something like that. So I, <laughs> trigger warning here. So I pulled <laughs> yeah. out a brand new scalpel blade. I sterilized it in alcohol and I started cutting around just to see. What? Yeah. <laughs> Just to see, like, can I find it? Like, is it just right below the surface? You went spelunking in your own body. Yeah, 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 I did. Then I took some tweezers. I sterilized everything. Took some tweezers, and I was digging around in my thumb to see, like, can I see it? Can I find it? And it just, the pain got too intense. And I went, no, 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 this is, we're, we're done with this. Maybe it's actually in my thumb. Yeah. So I called the advice hotline uh, for Kaiser. And they were just great like. great story, by the way. I know, they literally just went like, oh, well, just, you know. Come see us in the morning. It, it's not <laughs> that big. Thinking that, like, I have a splinter. Wrap it in duct tape. Yeah, yeah. So I'm now with the thumb that's the size of this bottle. What? Yeah, it's so, so, so thick. And I go to sleep. I wake back up first thing in the morning and I head to urgent care. And I'm to the point where if I move my hand at all below my heart, it's just throbbing. Uh, oh, my God. I spend seven. six and a half hours in urgent care. So urgent care is a bit of a misnomer. <laughs> Uh, they do yeah. x-rays, and the x-ray tech, uh, the, the x-ray tech v- audibly laughed and said, oh, yeah, it's in there. Oh, gross. And so she so showed me the Jeez. x-ray, and I had an inch section that I'd measured out, and somehow, when I clipped it, it flung around and just went, whoop. It boomeranged you. It, I don't know how that how? happened. We're um, not even in Australia. I know, I know. No, no, no down under sh- shenanigans oh for me. <laughs> okay. But they couldn't get it out. <laughs> what? And so then they sent me to the ER. So I'm spending another four or five hours in the ER for three hours. She's working at it, trying to, and she's like, cut me open all these different areas, trying to get it out. And she says, I see it, but I cannot get it because it wasn't perpendicular to my thumb. It was parallel to the bone. And she said, if I can't get on this next try, we're going to have to just patch you up and put you in for surgery. But the surgery doesn't, the the, the surgeon doesn't come in until Monday. Okay. This is Saturday. Oh my God. No. Finally, she just yanks it off. I'm numb from, like, my forearm up to my entire... My whole hand is so numb. She finally gets the thing out. And she's like, good, we we got it. I was like, throw that... How big was it? It was an inch long. It was an an inch long. Oh, an inch. Okay, okay. Because I measured it out. Right, that's right. I even had the little Sharpie mark on it for my measuring stuff. (laughs) So she throws it away. And to add insult to injury, when was the last time you had your tetanus shot? Oh, no. I went, okay. And I roll it up. She did me a tetanus shot. My arm is now sore. And she goes, and your thumb is really infected. Like, it was oh, yeah. purpley brown. And she goes, and so we're going to put a bunch of antibiotic stuff on it, but you're going to need a heavy dose. And I said, I'll oh, just put it next to the arm. She goes, pull down your pants, please. <laughs> so now I got a huge injection in my butt. And like I'm, your butt. Okay, yeah, I'm like the front. Yeah, I'm that like, would have been yeah. even funnier. Oh, right, right, right. Like yeah. Right to the testicles. Right, just... <laughs> For some reason. Just limping all over the place. I'm all bandaged up and everything like that. And so I had to put out a little thing on my Instagram. Just like, shit happens in this world. Be careful. (laughs) Just be a little bit more careful than I. So apparently I have to add leather work gloves to my hobby uh, rotation of safety or whatever. That was a wild ride. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Captain Mannering is probably best five bucks you've ever spent. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah. Uh, so chicken. Yes, that was my X-ray. Yeah, yeah that was. Uh, actually, one of your one of your um, one of your members. I can't remember off the top of my head. Sent me a message and was just like, just want to let you know you do have some personal information oh. in the top corner all over your That's Instagram. Very sweet. They're very like good about that. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. Luckily, it was just my birth date and my name. So oh, and then my, my gender of M or whatever. And my social. Yeah. yeah. My mother's My address, name. my maiden name, yeah. my credit card number. Yeah. No, so I was like, ooh, okay. So I'm, I actually took my personal photo and I actually like kind of blurred that part out. So if I send it out or anything like right, that. But right, right, right. Everyone knows my birthday now. So whatever. Yay. You should add it to our discord because then the bot will say happy birthday to you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, be safe out there. I'm, <laughs> Did, did not ever occur to me that that was don't, something like that was going to happen. Don't clip things out of view. You, well, what was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was it that did it? I, I don't really even <laughs> know. Knows? Like I could, I couldn't tell you. It, it's I just. I wonder if it like hit something and ricocheted. 
You know, it's probably because I have like a little drawer desk and I put it next to it. So yeah. it, it may have just ricocheted. Yeah. It may have just boomeranged, right? Just a little down under magic and stuff. I don't know, Mike. But like, woof. Yeah. Yeah, that was really hard because then I'm, I'm trying to hobby the next day like with this big old bandage thing and I'm just painting. <laughs> It was really awkward. I went, okay, I'll just take a break. Yeah. I'll take a break from hobbying a little bit. <laughs> um, where the heck were we? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. The little <laughs> the extra. The little happened and yeah. I totally derailed. <laughs> like, I don't want to get that. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's these little, uh, little extra bits of rust and stuff. So I chose to make it really subtle and mm -hmm. soft. So you can kind of see right in here. Let me get into the light. Right in here, I added a little extra tonal variation. Right in here, same kind of a thing, right? Yeah. It's the... Tiny little things, right? You don't have to go that far in any of this, right? It just showcases a little bit more about the metal and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and as promised, we're going to have this cool storm cast that Meg is donating, which is yeah. awesome. I love these models. They paint up so nice. They're so good. Yeah, and they are used in so many like painting classes. I mm -hmm. think this is from Nova of 2023. Cool. I think. Yeah. yeah. No, 2022, I mean. Cool. Um, Liberty Fires was there. Uh, he was in a different class with me, but same model. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, and it was like a metallics painting with metallic paint. Yeah. Class. And then you, you have cool. those like extra little color variations. It's really cool. Yeah. So one of my favorite things that Games Workshop, like paint wise, has done is this nylock oxide. Mm hmm. Because you, you, you're just kind of done when you're done with it. Right. Like you just you put it on, great, cool. You can go further with it. You can add other things, but I just, I, I mean, I, I've gone through three of these. Like, I love them. They're, mm. they're so great. And if I ever catch wind that they're going to get rid of them, I will do everything in my power to buy as many of them as I possibly can because I love yeah. it. I love it so much. Okay. Um, so one thing I really like to do is I like to kind of bust this little myth of weathering is just with robots and mm -hmm. tanks and stuff. Yeah. You can really add it into everything. Like, you know, you're talking about with the animals, right? You can mm -hmm. add that little bit of extra oomph to put it in its environment, right? Adding the little, adding the dust to the feet and stuff. That, yeah. That's weathering, right? So with, uh, you know, this little Stormcast boy, what I'm going to do is I'll take this kind of medium orange, this sort of dark rust by MIG. It's a great color. And I'm going to make a wash. All right, so I'm going to take in my little ramekin thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to add a ton of water into it. I'm going to make a little bit of a wash. And we'll do the same thing with the nylock oxide. And you're looking for it to really kind of flow. And we're going to apply this not as a wash. We're going to apply this more like a glaze. Because we want it to be okay. controlled. We want to put it in specific areas. So I'll load up my brush. Let's say, can I paint anywhere? Please, All right. yeah. Let's say the breastplate is definitely steel, and maybe this is more brass okay. for the sake of it. So I'm going to put it into these little chest cavities, right? And I'm going to just lightly, where's my thing? I'm going to lightly apply it um, into these little rivets and some of these little shadows and stuff. I'll put it right here. And you can, this is another way you can add little extra tonal variations as well, right? You paint it with a lot of fun color in mm -hmm. here. Now, the reason why I make it into a wash is it takes a little longer to dry. So I added just a little bit too much in these areas. I can then just come in with a clean brush and just kind of wipe, wipe it away. Um, whereas with the uh, the streaking grin, right. right, that one, you can kind of be a little heavy handed with it. With when you're ever doing like acrylics, like in this type of weathering, you you do want to be a little bit more specific because you want to be working in areas one section at a time mm -hmm. because it will still dry fairly quickly and you have a limited amount of time right. to kind of work in. So I'm going to just put this kind of everywhere in all of the creases. Hey, maybe he's a statue. Maybe it's uh, maybe he just doesn't care about his armor. That's true. This I mean, could just be a statue. Yeah, it could be a statue, yeah. but I mean, I don't think I, would, I don't think Sigmar would allow his guys to be all <laughs> um, rusted up. So I added it. It's a little difficult to see because it's so small, but I yeah. added it into these little lines right in here. Okay. You can kind of see. Right. Right. The recesses. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that's that's the chest plate is still very clean. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the the most likely spot for like something like a rust to, to yeah, collect. Yeah. Water and stuff. to collect. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. 
So I'll put it in his little little abs right here. I'll put it underneath. Okay, let's tilt it. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. Um, you have to, like, change the way you paint <laughs> on these things. That's fine. I mean, at yeah. Kublicon, I was... I guess it's kind of like that, too, yeah. Yeah, I was paint when I was teaching painting, because my whole thing with, with painting is, like, you know, everybody wants to have a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with the instructor and stuff, so I was... I was painting non-metallic metal standing up. That was really rough. Yeah. Oof. I signed up for a palette control class at LVO. Palette control? Yeah, it was What's with that? Clay Williams. Oh, Clay's awesome. He's I love cool. him. Yeah. Um, it was like how to keep your palette, well, how to set up your palette, how to like create like a color palette, that type of palette. Oh, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. Transitioning your colors and all that. And, oh, and yeah. And working in a smaller space than you think you need yeah you're, you're making your blends on the palette and yeah. controlling like where it actually that, yeah that's a really fun i was the only one that took that class it no was kidding. probably one of the best classes i've ever taken yeah because you're <laughs> like so i was like great tell we're me do everything what we need to do. he sat there staring at me paint like like intently <laughs> like watching me paint and and telling me like things here and there like oh you like to paint a little dry, don't you? <laughs> or like, yeah. oh, uh, do you always hold your brush like that? And I'm like, yeah. I, I guess. I don't know. Am I doing it wrong? <laughs> I'm trying. No. Um, it's, it's kind of intense, but it was really helpful to have somebody like watch you paint and tell you what you're doing right or wrong. Uh, and that's, yeah. that's part of the objective of why I'm wanting to teach some of these classes yeah. and do some contributions and stuff. Because you can do a lot of stuff on YouTube. You can see some fun stuff. But there, there's some, that, that human connection and that instant yeah. feedback and like... I tried it this way. Try it this way now. Yeah. How did that work? Right? You're getting that right. instant feedback and not have to, I have to wait for the next video or, or whatever and just hope that I got it right. Right. So I added that little bit of rust. I added a little bit more of that yellow in here. Um, just adds a little bit of extra tonal variation and stuff. And then this is one of my favorite things. Let's say it's brass. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to put that green everywhere. Nice. I'm being too ginger with this. We're going to add this in here. Maybe we'll put in some of these little rivets. We'll put it in this spot here. Just and just places where it would collect. Yeah, like, yeah. Typically the towards the room, yeah. typically towards the bottom, right? That's where that oxidation is going to kind of collect. Now, like oxide is a little different the way that it's formulated. You do need to be slightly quicker to kind of clean up some of these edges if that's mm -hmm. what you want. Um, but just make sure you have like a clean brush. And I like to do a little bit of a sweeping motion, usually ending my stroke to where the paint is collecting. Yeah. Right? Because then I, I'm trying to reduce that transition point. And so I want to stroke down towards where it's collecting and not up because that just defeats the whole purpose. Yeah. It's always important to stroke in the right direction. All the right tips here at the Hobby Collab. Yeah, so then you can kind of see this. I love this because it shows up so it's, well. Yeah. Right? And you, that's that that's weathering. Yeah. Right? If you wanted to just take it just a little bit uh, in, 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 a, in a step in the right direction yeah. of just that little extra, that like level up, right? Yes. You, you add that little tiny bit we of stuff. We love that phrase. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Um, those are the types of things okay. that you can kind of do. I'm going to work on that. What, what was the paint again that you used for the, um, the oxide? recess? Yeah. Oh, I just, the, uh, I used this, this orange mostly because, um, okay. <clears throat> mostly because add a little bit more water to that. Yeah. I'll put it on the palette. Yeah. Huh. Or should I not? Nope. Make, keep it in there keep and just add okay. a little bit of water to it. Um, I like the orange just because of what your, the base tone you had on that is. Okay. Um, it's going to show up that much better. Yeah. If you have say a yellow. You can, you probably might want, not yeah. want to do the orange. Okay. Yeah. No, that's perfect. Okay. That's perfect. And then you can add more that's water. That's kind of instant and stuff. feedback I need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Done. Um, yeah. If, if it's yellow, for example, I wouldn't use an orange. I'd probably okay. lean more into the browns because the yellow and the brown tends to uh, show up really well against each other. Okay. Whereas if I was doing something like a blue, I might want to lean more into the orange because blue and orange are complementary colors mm -hmm. and you can add that little extra bit of mm, contrast. Really and pop. Yeah, right, exactly. You can have that little bit of that pop in there and stuff. Yeah. Um, so well, that's really up to you. There's okay. a little bit of color theory and all of that, but typically... I was going to say this is like it's yeah. edging into like a color conversation. Like, yeah. come up for any topic, and, yeah. And it, a lot of it, we don't even have to get into the color conversation. We can really just look, is this dark 
let's add something a little lighter. Is yeah. this light? Let's add something a little darker. Yeah. You can really boil it down into really, really simple, um, like, ideology on mm-hmm. all of that. Then you can start... Going, You're going for contrast. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I'm really liking this. Why is it working this way? Mm-hmm. Or then you can kind of start asking those other questions and start talking to people of, oh, it's working because of these things within, regarding color theory or within yeah. these compositions and stuff like that. But, you know, we're just trying to level up our painting. That's that's what the whole goal is. Yeah. So if it's dark, do light. If it's light, do dark. You're going to get some instant contrast right there. Yeah. Also try stuff. Just have fun with it. You yeah. Know? Like yeah, there's yeah, there's yeah. no really wrong answer for any of this. If you want to do your own custom color combination, great. Add a little extra bits of that piece is fantastic. Yeah. One of my favorite things with weathering too is the environment. Um okay. and adding like bird shit. Oh my god. Yeah. Gross. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you got you painted a piece of piece of thing and like he's standing there. Maybe he's got a little <laughs> Yeah. You know, he just, he stood there for a little too long, That's, you know? That'd be such a good diorama. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I have, I have a few. Poles, like the Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like... I have a few pieces that I've done, little yeah. bits of bird shit and stuff like that. I built so a little fun. bird nest and I went, well, something's not right. Yeah. Oh, well, there's no bird shit everywhere. And so I would add bird shit and stuff, I have so. a bunch of bats for my, fell bats in my soul light army. I wonder if I should have, like, guano <laughs> like underneath them. Oh, that's like, awesome. They're like, we're coming for you, but first, <laughs> we need to unload. <laughs> we need to prepare yeah. ourselves for battle. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to keep working on this yeah, go with for what it. you showed me. And it. then we have a critique happening, which is great. Cause the we weathered have, thumb. Yeah, yeah that's, exactly. That's yeah. it. The weathered thumb. Um, we have Devin here with us to give a hobby pro critique. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to have your work critiqued on our show, just post it in hobby critique channel in our discord and, um, let us, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll catch them when we can and and feature them on our shows. Usually this is a Wednesday thing, but um, we thought it would be extra special to have Devin doing it. Yeah. Because he's a pro. So, yeah. so pro. this is Broken Chef's work. Um, Broken Chef. He is looking for feedback on the basing scheme for mm-hmm. this unit um, on the left and on the right are two basing schemes he's um, tried out already and isn't happy with. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um... Just to give you a little bit of how I like to do feedback, uh, yeah. I like to do really just a, a compliment sandwich. Really, sure. is that that's what uh, that's what my that's what my boy Seth, you know Seth, like mm-hmm. that, that's how he described it. I think that's a perfect, right? Yeah. Um, I like I can't to tell you called them happy sandwiches. Yeah. Oh, that's even more fun. No. Um, is I tell you something that I I like about it, or is good that you've been successful on. Sure. One thing that you've uh, that you maybe could improve upon and then wrap it all off with, I really like the idea or like what you have done with this. Um, so that way it's not just somebody going like, this sucks. You're actually getting some good actionable feedback. So in regards to your Stormcast, one, I love the Space Wolves. I am a old school Space Wolf player. So I love the Space Wolf heads. It has a lot of fun character to it. Um, but like my overall thing on this is that I like that kind of dark, dingy, armor um with that kind of gold trim um and you don't really see these guys with a lot of loud colors i love that outside of like blues so that orange looks really really cool with that and so you've kind of got this palette of this dark metallic-y gray with this kind of ruddy brass or gold with this orange so you you kind of can really run into really whatever you're wanting um so in regards to the basing, um, especially for gaming, I like adding things to my bases, right? So put like a little ghost kill. I have little things on the ghost kill, little plants. I got little rock cairns on here. Um, on my broadside, I have a little fallen space marine, you know, from the, uh, yes. the from the Medicaid, uh, yeah. the, the, oh, what are they called? Yeah, the Medicaid. The guy who takes the gene seed out yeah. of it. Yeah. So okay. I, I took one of those, actually recasted it so that I, oh. you know, can put it on there. So I put little fallen warriors and stuff like that and just have a little bit of fun with it. Some of my stealth boys, I got some mm-hmm. barbed wire and stuff. Um, so I typically like to add a little bit of texture paint or or even cork to add a little bit of verticality yeah. to it, right? Um, with gaming pieces, I like to keep things relatively simple. So for in this particular instance, I would add um, different styles and textures of texture paint. 
So we've got the the model on the right with the the green lizard mm-hmm. right there, or the green beast that the the Stormcast guy is riding. Yeah. Um, that's a really fun texture to have in there. But when you put it across everything, it starts to get a little samey and sure. a little boring. So mix it up. Maybe do one of the guys has a full base of that. Maybe one of the guys has like a 50-50 of that texture and maybe a heavier texture or a, or a lighter texture. What you know, whatever whatever right. it is that you're liking. Um, and don't sleep on those crackle effects. Put little spots of those little crackle effects from uh, from like AK or the um, the texture paints that GW uh, put out um, that has that little crackling effect yeah. and stuff. That adds a lot of fun dynamic. So like on top of on top of like a texture or on top of like next, the base itself. Or? Next to the texture. Okay. So you've got that you've got that like rough texture right there. You can cover 50, 75 percent of the base, and then the rest of the base that's you know that plastic still add that crackle texture paint to it right so now you have two different styles Mm -hmm. of environment and you can kind of show like look these guys are charging forward you can show the movement right you got the middle guy who's obviously kind of standing there yeah maybe you make him in one like part of the environment the guy on the the back uh the back right he's obviously charging forward maybe you make it in that he is leaving one side of the environment and entering into another yeah so don't be afraid to like mix and match mix all of these different up. texture paints. That's also part of the hobby, right? Right. Um, as for color, I would probably stick more into the like maybe neutral tones of like maybe like grays and browns because you don't want the base to ever really steal the show, right? Right. You want to kind of accent it into it. Um, and because you've got so- tons of neutral colors with that really like rocket orange. Bi molecule. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. With that, with that orange, right? You can. I really want that play orange with. to like keep popping. Yeah. It's so yeah. attractive. And you can put yeah. that into the actual um, texture paint as well, like on the base. Mm-hmm. So I would kind of lean in towards those darker, like maybe brownish grays into those. Uh, this kind of like dark umber is a really good color by uh, Pro Acryl Monument Paints and stuff. And then you can do, you know, kind of your Agrax Earth shade over everything or you can maybe do a 50 50 mix of agrax or shade and that fuegan orange shade right yeah so now you have a little bit of orange in there as well right don't be afraid of also without only... stealing the show yeah, yeah. It, right and you have a little bit of that orange in there so stuff starts to tie together um you could go a little bit more into the color theory and maybe sneak a little bit of blue in there mm-hmm. right or a little bit of purple purple i think work, work, can work really really well um and don't be afraid to add extra stuff to the environment add your tufts Add a skull. Add a, add some bricks. You know, like from the rubble and stuff. Yeah. To me, that that add stuff. Add stuff. Yeah, and adding that extra bit of verticality, it does take a little bit. Um, does take a little bit of forethought with it, right? Because you have to kind of prepare that. Okay, this is going to be a little bit taller. Maybe the guy's you know standing on the tactical rock. Use that to your advantage. Mm-hmm. And now you have a little bit of verticality to it because the terrain isn't always going to be, yeah. you know, just a flat And it plane. brings, like, importance to that model. Yeah, it's exactly. It's a little bit exactly. taller or whatever it is. And then who doesn't like adding, like, fun little victims to your base and stuff like that? Yeah. Especially because there's on those, I think those are 50s, those 50 mil bases, or maybe they're 40s. Um, you, you have a lot of room that you can kind of play with. Mm-hmm. And you, you just have a little bit of fun with it. Um yeah, and I mean, don't add stuff to every single one of them, right? Because you want them to be cohesive. Mix it up. Yeah. And just yeah, just kind of mix it up and stuff. But uh, have fun with washes, for sure. Washes and inks and stuff, because that's how you can kind of get smuggle colors in anywhere. And oh, stuff that's like a that. good way to phrase it. Yeah, yeah. Smuggle yeah. colors. Yeah, color yeah, smuggling. I love that. Yeah, I like I like I like color smuggling so that you've got colors with inside of colors with inside of colors. There's a little bit of inception there. Mm-hmm. But then that just makes things a little bit more interesting, and it it also, in my opinion, it really, it really changes the way you paint, because yeah. now you're not, oh, I'm gonna go a base, a layer, a dry brush, you know, a highlight and stuff like that. You're now kind of thinking a little bit more on the artistic side, and so you can then just kind of play around with some colors. If those colors don't quite work together, well, you're working with a wash. Just take a paper towel and. You know, dab some of that up. Yeah. Put another wash over it. Or you do a little bit heavier of a dry brush on that texture paint or, or you know, whatever it is that you're wanting to do, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, keep up the good work. That that orange is 
the, man, that orange is screaming. I really love it. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. And you can you can add a ton of different things to it. And uh, maybe you have like a fallen a fallen warrior that they're they're mad about, right? One of their one of their brethren or whatever. And so you, maybe you can have like the remnants of one of the swords, the stormcast swords, or like the hammer or something like mm. that. You know what I mean? That they're running past yeah. or charging towards or. You know, an orc knife story. or something. So many stories. Yeah. yeah. It's not, that's awesome. it's it's not a mini if you're not telling a story, in my opinion. That's true. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's me, though. I love, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, just add in little things. <laughs> little, 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 little rebar, little yeah. iron and stuff like that. I, I love this. Yeah, the little rock cairn. It's a rock. It, and look at how, that tells you how big this freaking thing is. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> so another thing, big. right? You, you can kind of show the Some sense of scale. scale. Yeah. Right, right. Like... Oh, some hiker or whatever on this planet was setting up this rock <laughs> cannon, and then hiker. he just pops up, and it's like, oh, yo, he's I'm big. trying to imagine somebody in the grim, dark universe just going out for a leisurely hike. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's on them at that point. <laughs> How is anybody having a good time in this universe? Every story I hear is just, like, worse and worse than the I think the, the Tyranids probably have objectively the, the best fine. time. Yeah. yeah, they don't care. Yeah, yeah, they don't, they don't really care. They're yeah. just, what, 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 is the, what is the phrase? Everything is just biomass? Yeah. It's fine. They're just hungry boys. Hungry boys. Or things. I don't know what they it's, are. It's really. they's. <laughs> um, cool. That was amazing. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that not a problem. Feedback. Um, want to remind everybody for our mandrels, you can have more of this. <laughs> we have some workshops coming up in our Discord. So choosing the right colors, which you got a little bit of a taste of today. Yeah. Um, on the 24th and then quick and dirty NMM, we will create events for these actually in our discord. So you'll, you'll see, you'll be able to set yourself up with a reminder. Um, and then we have two more coming down the pipeline. Yeah. So, um, and I, I want to remind, uh, yeah. like kind of inform people about these, these classes. It, I want these to be interactive. I want you totally. to ask questions, come with prepared with some questions, um, come with the attitude that I'm just a fellow nerd. Right, I'm just some. I want to talk about this kind of stuff. A nerd, just like us. Yeah, exactly. And so don't don't think of it as like, oh, I can't ask a question. I gotta. I don't want to interrupt. Please, by all means, interrupt. Ask the question. Um, because really, this is for this is for you guys. And uh, well, honestly, a little bit is it for me too. I'm kind of getting my my chops in in regards to teaching because I will be teaching. Um, if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area yeah. uh, around Memorial Day, I will be teaching at uh, the Kublicon. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be teaching some of these quick and dirty type methods. Um, it isn't official yet as to which ones are going to be in the course, so I can't say what it is that I'm teaching. Um, and then I'm also going to be teaching at Nova yeah. Labor Day weekend out in the, the D.C. area. We'll be there. Yeah. It's I'll probably be... sign up for a class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. Um, and you know, all, all of these classes are, I, I'm branding them as quick and dirty, right? It's just something to level up your painting. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Molecule Cody before he left level up is such perfect a perfect term. term. Yeah. So the whole thing is just, you know, level up your painting into whatever tier you're wanting to get into. Yeah. Hey, I just started painting. I want to get a little bit better. Hey, I've been painting for a few years. I want to get, I want to, I just want to make things just, you know, maybe this, centerpiece maybe my you know my my, my gilliman right because i only have mm-hmm. one for my army right i have no reason to buy another one right or i just got this knight i'm really only going to have one or two of them you know i, I want to make it that much more special or i'm thinking about getting into competitions i'm thinking about getting yeah. into displays and stuff like that whatever it is i my whole thing is scalable level ups and i want to kind of cater those those lessons so that it really doesn't matter what skill level you have. I want to keep it, you know, pretty pretty relatable and pretty appro- approachable for really anybody, you know? Yeah. Let's see what you've been doing. Yeah, so I've just been, I've been deciding certain parts are. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the bronze versus yeah. um, the steel. It's kind of random. Yeah, and this is, but, this would actually no, be really. pretty simple, yeah. This actually be a really fun reference piece for yourself. Too, yeah, exactly. Right? You can keep that and just be like, oh, okay, all right, I really like how that looks and stuff like that. And you kind of see how it interacts and, you know, you can add a little, little yeah. bits and pieces And it was there. really easy. I can see, if I had an army that had a bunch of yeah. uh, metallics on it, I don't usually, but if I do, which I might, um, I can see myself doing that. Like, yeah. what's nice is you can finish the whole thing and be like, okay, I'll do the weathering later. And yeah. then when you need, like, something chill to mm-hmm. work on, you can just 
pull it out. You, and you can do I s- do that for like assembly. Like assembly is my for sure. If I'm not kit bashing, which I rarely do, yeah. Um, it's just like cool. I'm gonna follow some instructions okay. and hang out and like zone out. And that sounds to me like that's how this yeah. feels. Like for, for a sure. Nice. Like I'm gonna it's, just take a break, but I still want a hobby. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It, it's it's. It's getting out of those those reps in, if you will, right? Yeah. It's just like ah, I don't have about thirty minutes. Yeah. Well, I've been wanting to do some selective weathering. So then, then you take your, take the the little creases of your tow drone or yeah. of your stormcast or whatever, and just add those little bits here and there, and you'd be surprised. Those little tiny touches can really just take that you know ordinary gaming piece to something really really cool. Like yeah. that little touch of green, it. Shows it shows up from three feet right. away really really nicely. Right. So those types of little techniques and those types of things just level up. <laughs> that's that's the whole thing with it, right? Yeah. Wonderful. Um, cool. We have fifteen minutes left ish. I mean, eh, usually we end at fifty five, so ten minutes left. Okay. Um, last chance to get in your super chats or um, gifted memberships before we head out. But I. Wanted to ask you, okay, mm-hmm. so like on your towel bust, you have a lot yeah. of like line work, like scratchy yeah. line work, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Um, what, here, hold it. Yeah. Tell me, tell me specifically that you're talking about. Like these longer, um, like straight scratch marks, sure. not like dots. Yeah. It's not, yeah. So how do we do stuff like that? All right. So I'm actually developing a course, <clears throat> developing a small freehand course. Okay. Right. And it's not freehand for making banners because I'm not that kind of artist yet. Sure. I, I mean, I can do some freehand, but not the greatest. My, my freehand is more of the chipping and stuff like that. Um, really, it takes a nice sharp brush. I personally like the ones with a bigger belly. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of muscle memory. So it's a lot of trying and failing and trying and stuff like that. Yeah. But I like to say paint with a smile. Right? Paint with a smile. Paint with a smile. So essentially you're gonna take your brush and you're going to paint. We're, we're exaggerating here. You're gonna sure. paint with a smile. Okay. Right? So you think about each oh. end of the smile. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is serious. No, so each each end of your of your uh, of that little line, <clears throat> you're gonna start very light. Mm-hmm. You're going to press a little harder. And then you're going to press a little light, right? It kind of creates a bit of a U. Oh, so it's a like smile. a smile towards you, not like... <clears throat> not me. not literally not like, like on this. The yeah, it's <laughs> like, more of that's a... That's interesting. It's more of towards you, <laughs> okay, right? Okay, okay. Um, so that's how you can get those really fine scratches. You apply such little pressure, you add a little bit more pressure, and then you pull the pressure off. It's making little micro smiles, but they're okay. facing you and stuff like that. Um, and in some instances, uh, you know... Here we can show it on, uh, yeah. on the Lumix. And in some instances, <clears throat> so she was referring to some of these lines and these scratches yeah. and stuff like that, right? Pull that there. Right? So this is a really good one to see. Um, it was create that line, and it was a very straight line. Mm-hmm. Well, that just doesn't look quite right to me. Right. So then I made that line a little bit bigger. So I'm going to, I'm going to exaggerate this for the camera, but I'm going to be very, very, very light. I'm going to press, I'm going to pull, and pull up. Right? There's that smile. Mm-hmm. Then after I've kind of got, oh, I've got this thick line that I really like. And then I kind of went in and I kind of made little jagged marks and stuff like that. And yeah. this was a push and pull kind of process um, just to give it a little bit more of an organic feel and stuff. So that's that's a quick and easy way to kind of do that, uh, that those, those those nice little lines and stuff yeah. like that. That does take practice. That takes time. Right, to yeah. get those really soft, subtle scratches and stuff like that. That takes a lot of practice and a lot of muscle memory to sure. just get those really fine lines for whether it's texture or just like a little scritch scratch kind of a thing and stuff. Um, but yeah, always paint with a smile. With a smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I might try that. Yeah, it's it, it has a lot of fun, dynamic nature to it. And it this looks like, you know, on these towel guys, right? Yeah. Like it's been running through and there's rubble, right? It's running through explosions and there's rocks and stuff. But you come in here with that that paint, right? And you start adding in that little bit of a line. Mm-hmm. Now that's looking a little bit more intentional. You can add a little scratch, little cross scratches and stuff. And we'll <laughs> right. We're adding these tiny yeah. little scratches. And what's cool that's is you super can then fine. Yeah. you can then drag it all along so something skittered around and mm-hmm. stuff 
It's really fine. It's really a little difficult to see on, on, the, on the camera at this moment, but you can add these little like intentional lines of, you know, someone was targeting the drone no, it just and, missed. Like, it nicked it. It, it yeah. just grazed it. And so if you want it to be a graze, you make it a little bit finer. If you want it to be a little bit you know, a little bit heavier or mm -hmm. whatever, you can come back on that same fine line and push and paint with that smile. Yeah. And so now it's just a little bit thicker. You can kind of see right in here. And then you can go in there and you can reinforce with those rust colors if right. you wanted it. Or you can then come in and highlight. It's very fresh or, you know, kind of really whatever you whatever it is you're wanting to do as long yeah. as you're painting, right? Yeah. Okay. Love it. Um, really quickly, a quick one last reminder about what we have going on in our Discord for our mandrels coming up. Become a mandrel today. Um, also, we are launching Sword in the Spoon, which is our Age of Sigmar game show. I'm actually going to be on today at 1. It's a double dose of Meg Day, so there's no that. Brett, who's in chat right now, he's going to be playing at 1 with me. Um, and then we have a few more games lined up this week. It's pretty intense um, before we get to our regular schedule which will be two games a week one on um actually i have a schedule right here one on monday for members and one on saturday Ooh, so at cool yeah along with our hobby hangouts and our journeys um right now zach's working on leveling up his daughters of cain level up um and saray is working on a zinch commission Ooh. which is fun so every other friday our members get to see us paint these big projects, these long form projects. Oh my gosh, yeah. and you have the cute little lab rats Thank and mandrels. You. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. I'll give you some <laughs> stickers. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I have a tradition though. Anytime okay. I'm given a sticker by another hobbyist, I have them place it on my palette. Oh, though. let me go get one. We'll yeah. Do it on yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. Yes. I, I like anytime I go to a convention or anytime I, I, I meet up with another hobbyist or, or something like that, I always have them put it on here. So. Oh. I'm actually kind of about due to buy another palette lid because I'm like three layers deep on all of these and stuff like that. So <laughs> I know. Uh, but what Good, my, that's my, fine. I'll be on top. Yeah, my plan is though is I'm actually going to start turning these into art. They're yeah. So I'm gonna I get smart. I'll get a new yeah. palette lid and stuff like that, and then I'll I'll hang it up and stuff. That's so, so cool. Let's. All let's, right. So am I allowed to do it then? Anywhere you anywhere, want. You don't mind? Okay. The reason why is I pass the buck on to you if you cover if up someone's sticker. I don't. Sticker, I, I know. I'm like. I if you know, cover up someone's stickers, I just say, yeah, I didn't do it. That was Meg. <laughs> It's my fault. <laughs> that horrible co hobby collab woman. Uh, greedy. Um, okay. Here we go. Got it. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, now here comes the decision. Oh, my gosh. Who do I cover? Okay, I think if I go here, I only cover a little bit of many. So I'll do that. There you go. Bam. Hobby collab. There it is. And of course, it's got, I did it wrong. No, we're good. <laughs> You're good. I mean, some of them have been cut. <laughs> That's us. Um, and then I'll give you these stickers too for funsies. Um, that's our lab rat. Yeah, awesome. our lab mandrel, and our little Ooh, logo. Uh, I love beaker. it. Those are awesome. You guys can get those in our Etsy shop, by the way, if you want yeah. some stickers. We do have some. We also have a couple shirts left if you guys are interested in a Fun. shirt. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Brett, and you're welcome, Fugs. Fugs, <laughs> Fugs, 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 I like whatever. Thugs. <laughs> whatever we feel like that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Depends on the uh, how spicy you are today. Exactly. I love it. Um. Devin, this was fantastic. This was so much fun. I really liked it. <laughs> I learned a lot. Yeah, I am I'm not glad. a weatherer, and now I am feeling like you, I can you're, you're now I can, a, uh, You're now it. a weatherer. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I've been knighted, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Any any last things to share um, with the audience? Or? You can always hit me up on the Discord um, or on my Instagram. I tend to be a little bit more responsive on the Instagram just because I'm part of a lot of Discords and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you hit me, hit me up on the Discord, that's totally fine. Um, it just might be a little bit of a delay, but you can always hit me up. I'm always available to answer any types of questions. Yeah, if you have a question, just tag. Really, you've been really present. Yeah, we I, appreciate I it. try to make sure that with, with all of that, and I don't yeah. mind, you don't have to sign up for being a mandrel or yeah. have to sign up for one of my classes. You just, just ask. It's not a problem. It's just the benefit with those classes and the benefit with these kind of more focused, like kind of, a, I guess, paid content is that you're going to get something quite a bit more in depth yeah and a little bit more actionable and stuff but yeah. I, I try to be as helpful as part of the community as, as much as possible so get at me yeah he's a good guy yeah. all right guys um it's been fun it's, it's been great it's having been a blast. you i hope you come back i will well, well, looking forward yeah. to hanging out with you again yeah, absolutely um as we like to say around here be kind to yourselves be kind to each other and always be creating see you later mm -hmm.